<laughs> What's up, guys? We're live. Uh, man, I'm very excited about tonight's chat. We've got another amazing sports artist. Uh, it's cool because now we're doing artist interviews every Friday, which is great. So this Friday today, we've got Ken Carl. Ken Carl, Ken Carl Sports Art and Mouthful. Welcome, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'm telling you what. I have been looking forward to this all week, man. Let's go. I love it, man. I love it. Well, I'm super pumped. I know uh, I saw on Twitter a lot of people were very excited. Uh, had some questions come in before. Obviously, we've got people coming in now, coming in live. And so it's just going to be a conversation, man. There's no rules. There's no time limits. Uh, whatever you want to do uh, is all good. So we'll just... Uh, yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, first of all, I want to say this first, man. Thanks yeah. to you and Matt for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys have no idea the power you guys have already on social media. I mean, I picked up 40 something followers in the last 24 hours. Just you guys mentioning me. I mean, I can't thank you enough for that. Amazing. Um, I saw you uh, across a thousand on, on Twitter. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And secondly, I, secondly, I want to say to you, Blake, man, you have been a great ambassador for other sports artists. Um, the Top 2020 Project, man, has opened the eyes of a lot of people to other people like myself out there. And not only that, you have been a great human being to me, as you know. And again, I can't thank you enough. People should hear how good of a dude you are off camera, man. I, again, I can't say enough and thank you. Hopefully someday I'll get to repay the favor to you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome to have you. I absolutely love your work. I think... And I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Tops 2020 project is actually how I found your work because somebody had tagged me, you, and Lauren Taylor in the same post. And um, it's possible that I had been following you before, but I, like that really put you on my radar, um, oh. like, deep diving into like all of your stuff. I just think it's so cool. And it was one of one of the fans from like these, yeah. stuff, you know, that was just. How good are these fans, man? They're unbelievable. I mean, yeah. the people in this community, as you've already realized, I've only been in really two years. They are a special group of people, man. I mean, all the things they do for us, how supportive they are. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, I, again, I can't say enough good things about them either. And yes, that is the tweet. I was actually at a baseball tournament with my youngest son. That's and awesome. I'm, sitting, I'm sitting under a shade tree. My wife is like, what are you doing on your phone? I'm like, Missy, my phone is blowing up right now. Awesome. I said, I just got tagged with two heavyweights in the industry, man, and, and it's gone crazy. So, yes, I remember it. I remember the day. So, yeah, that's good stuff. I love it, man. And I loved uh, that you were down to jump on a call. Uh, What's it? Probably been a month or so since we talked. Yeah. About home. Um, and it sounds like things are going well. I mean, they oh, are, they're going really well. That's amazing, man. I love to hear yeah. that. Yeah, so, thank you. Obviously, you know, I got a little bit of your background and your story when we talked on the phone, but for the people in the comments that ha that kind of don't know your story and your history, do you want to just run them through just, oh, as high level or low, like you can deep dive as much as you want, but just kind of give them an idea of your background and what kind of led you to where you're at today with making these amazing custom one-on-one -on -one cards. All right. Well, I'm going to try here. You can cut me off if it gets a little too boring. I'm, oh, I'm a bit of, I've been known to be a bit of a talker, so... <laughs> uh, um, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I bet I want to do this my whole life, sports art, but it is hard to find a way, an avenue to it. I'm sure you know that already. Yep. And uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I gave up and quit and tried, made excuses why things weren't working out for me. Um, all those roads I've been down, right? Um, but then a long story short, uh, uh, I'm from St. Louis. There's a uh, good artist in town named Stephen Walden. He's been like a mentor to me, been a great dude, a great help to me. You people out there should go check his stuff out, Stephen Walden. Um, but anyway, he sat me down one day, gave me some, you know, some tough advice. He just like, look, dude, your stuff's good, but uh, people don't have to have it. You know, that's part of your problem. And he was like, you know, the best thing I can tell you is, you know, go make some art that people have to have. Now, that was hard to hear. I'm not going to lie to you, but after I had a chance to digest it and think it over, he was right, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, long story short, I'm, I'm on Facebook one night trying to find a place to sell some of my bigger pieces. And I, I checked into some baseball card groups. I thought that'd be a good place to look. Right. Yeah. And, uh, somebody had, sold, somebody was advertising some one of one hand drawn sport cards on there. I thought to myself, well, man, I could, I could do something like that. You know, I had done a few in the past. I actually did some for Beckett for a national convention a few years back. 
Um, I have an agent who suggested it to me a few years ago. I actually thought it was insulting, to be honest with you. I hate to say that now. Um, but because I didn't know enough about it, I didn't understand it, you know. Um, but I, I saw that night on Facebook, I dabbled with it, and man, I posted some a couple of days later, and they just start, they've been selling like hotcakes so much I quit my job. Like, three months later, you know, Amazing. it's just, been, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. Social media is unbelievable. You hear it all the time, but until you live it, you can't understand it. You know, Dude, that's, that's so awesome. And so how, so how long ago is that? Like how long has it been since you've been doing primarily just cards? Just about two years now. I mean, I've come, I, I, when I started, I would sit down. I didn't know how they were going to look. I would get started and anyone who does them could probably tell you this. I get about a half hour and I'm like, this is a mess. This is not going to turn out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but I keep doing them. And the next thing you know, man, you just like anything else, you start to, you like to think you get better and better at it, you know? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, the word speaks for itself. It's amazing. Oh, well, thank so, you. And what is, what is that process like? So are you painting? So sometimes, you know, you open up a pack of cards and you think you have like a hit where it's, you know, one of the thicker cards and it's just one of those <laughs> cardboard, like white cards. Is uh -huh. it kind of like that? Are you painting on something? So, so here's how my process works. Uh, I put them on illustration board. I searched because I like them thicker. Um, okay. I use markers and I use them pretty uh, uh, generously. They bleed and they, and they might, on the wrong surface. The, the people that do them know what I'm talking about. They will uh, they'll start to bleed and become a mess. Okay. So I I've had uh, I've tried several times to find the right service. I finally have a, a card stock I get at a local business store that works for me, and then I adhere that to an illustration board and make them thicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's 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 the, the route I go. Um, so my mine are a lot thicker than a regular card. Awesome, like the ones like the ones you're talking about. Sure, sure, yeah, um, awesome. Also, Matt just just slipped me a note. It's uh, to remind me to say happy sixth birthday to Nathan Roble. So <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Nate. Let's go. <laughs> up, happy birthday, Nathan. Um, man, that's so cool. And so, and are you painting them like the size, like they're already cut and you're just painting there? Or are you painting on a bigger thing and then you trim them down to baseball size? How does that work? No, I, you know, actually here, I have some boards that are, ready to go so i cut them down to card size okay and then i have a laser printer that i then put my label on if you will i was curious about that awesome so you do that first uh-huh and then you know once they're together these aren't together yet once they're like that then i just draw on top of this okay got it awesome man yeah that's how it works Man, and then and then in terms of the actual drawing, so you're looking at a reference photograph. Sure, sure. And then you know you've got your markers and, and colored pencils and things. Uh -huh. Are you are you like sketching it out with pencil first? Do you just go in with color? Like I'm just I'm fascinated by like. Well, oh, it's, uh, it's this is a this is a cat out of the bag. You can appreciate this, but a lot of uh, people out there that don't know the behind the scenes of how art works, right? Sure. Um, yes, I could spend the time sketching it out like a comic book artist and feeling it out and finding where everything goes. But let's be honest, do you know this? That'll take forever in a day. Of course. Okay. Of course. So what I do is I find the source material. Yep. And then I transfer it onto the to the surface. Got let's it. say using um, sort of sort of graphite paper, whatever. I use different things from time to time, whatever I feel like it today. Cool. Once I get it on there. Then, you know, I have the basic outline and then the rest, you really can't do much more than that because the people that do this know what I'm talking about. The lines will show through the markers and stuff. So once you get the basic outline, you know, then, I will, uh, then I will start filling it in with marker first. Cool. I, I will lay down the lighter color marker shades and just keep laying on top, yeah. laying yeah. darker, darker, darker. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And one thing that I think stands out in your work that I love and, and I incorporate it into some of my work too, but like the kind of outline, which almost gives it like the comic book or cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you can see the area I'm in, I'm a huge comic book guy. So people ask me all the time if I collect baseball cards. I don't collect a lot of baseball cards, okay. but I do collect, I got over 30,000 comics in my basement. So 
So for me, that's what influences my, I don't think I have a style, but people say I do. Yeah. Um, but that, as you, like you said, it's very comic booky style, not intentionally. That's just kind of what I like. So. Mm -hmm. No, so, I, like I think it's, I think it's so cool. And I mean, it's just, it's unreal, man. I couldn't, I couldn't do what you do. And it's, it's so, it's so amazing. So if you guys haven't seen Ken Carl's work, by the way, down below this video, there's the link to his website and then also to his Twitter. He just crossed a thousand followers today. Let's see how fast. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's so cool how supportive everyone is and, you know, the people here are family. Yes. Um, okay. So walk us through. What is your commission process like? If if someone says because every card you do is a one of one, right? That's that is correct. So so like many years when I first started doing this, I would do them at a much cheaper price, of course, because I was just trying to sell them. You've probably been down that road as an artist yourself, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, you and I have actually talked about this privately. <laughs> but anyway, I would do them that just to get business, you know. Yep. But then I also know there's no way the amount of time I put into them that's not justifiable. That's not sustainable yeah, yeah, yeah. in any way. Totally. Oh, my original thought was, is I would do the one of one. I would sell it at a, I believe this requires your at a cheaper price. And then I would uh, sell the prints on eBay. And I did that for a while, very early on. Yep. Okay. Yep. I would sell prints for real cheap. Now that was a pain in the butt because every week I'd spend three or four hours loading everything into eBay. And then you had to track them down, mail them out. Mailing, as you know, is very time consuming. Uh, but anyway, then a guy, not very or very early in my process, reached back out to me and he showed me the a picture of his card I did for him on eBay. And he's like, "Man, you know, I'm not real happy about this." And I'm like, "Well, you know, I I was uh, ignorant. To, you know, I didn't understand." I'm like, "Well, I don't know. You know, I don't want to make you mad. What's what's bad?" And right. he said, "Well, I, you know, I bought the card because it was a one of one. You know, and now I see prints of it on there." And my original response was, "Well, it's not the same. You, it's it's not the original. It's a print of it." And he's like, well, you know, it's no big deal. I just want you to know it just kind of caught me off guard. So later that night, I thought about it. I just thought, man, he's right. I I advertise as a one of one I, You know, it's wrong to do it. So it's ever since then, I do not. People ask me all the time. Guy today asked me, would I sell prints on mine? I just said, no, you know, I just yeah. won't do it. Yeah. You know? well, I, I, think that, I think that's smart. I think that a lot of your, uh, a lot of interest is the fact that it is a one of one. Um, yeah, you, you know, it's funny that you say it. Yeah. I had a guy who bought a card for me very early on yeah. and he, and I, I asked him, you know, cause I was just learning. I said, I go, look, you're a big Ken Griffey fan. I got a Ken Griffey piece. He's like, Oh yeah, I've seen it. It's awesome. He said, but I go, well, yeah, not to be ignorant, but why wouldn't you buy that? It was cheaper and it's bigger. And he said, well, he held the card up to me. I never forget. He held it up to me. He said, this here is mine. I'm the only guy in the world that has one of these. That's right. Anyone, anyone can have that other thing. And I like it. Don't get me wrong. But this is mine. I'm the only guy that has it. And yeah. I learned a valuable lesson that day. That's what that's what I'm about now. So, yeah. no, I think that's awesome. And I think, you know, uh, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but I think in the future there could be opportunities for you to do prints of some of your work. But I think separating it and making a one of one yes. and yeah. a print series that's intended to be uh, and maybe still limited. Maybe it's a, a run of 100 prints. Sure, 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 sure. Um, yeah, which I, I think would be great. Just like, and to the same point, like if you, I think you would have been a great fit for Project 2020. And like I told you the other day, I was showing Jeff Heckman your art, and he was very impressed, um, really impressed with your stuff. So you're on Top's radar, which is great. Oh, and good. Thank you. Yeah, thank in you. That situation, you're designing one card, you get to keep the original, and then, you know, they could sell thousands of copies potentially. Um, and I right, think right. that being part of the business in the long run. To be really yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Do you have any cards uh, handy that you could like hold up and show people? I saw a few people just asking to see your art. And I know they can click over, they can go to your website, but um, if people didn't see it ahead of time. I'd love to just show them a couple. Yeah, I have I have a few back here. I'll, I'll um, reach back and grab them for you. Okay, no rush. <laughs> We're here. Yeah. Well, they're all handy. I, my little studio is not as big as yours. It's pretty small. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, so... And you're in St. Louis, you said. Oh, this is in card. It's, I call it an action card because it's not just a headshot. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Trout. Yeah, I love the stadium in the background. I saw this original source photo. I thought, oh, man, that is dope, you know. So this is this is mine at home. This is, you know, this isn't going anywhere for a while. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's that one. Um. Of course, if you have Mike Trout, you got to have a Ken Griffey Jr. 
Oh, sick. And I, I love sunglasses and eye black, man. I mean, I can't get enough of it. That says, that says baseball to me, if you know what I'm saying. So, totally. totally. Um, and then here's an interesting one. Here, I got two more. I'll show you two more. Great. I actually did. People ask me all the time if, everything, if I've ever done a set for tops. I have. I've done one sketch card set, and it was a UFC set. Oh, nice. So and this was, Pierre? Yes, this is my artist proof. I had two others. I sold the other two, uh, and this is another one. This is like a uh, trophy. You can appreciate this, you know. Of course. It was, a, it was a dream of mine to always draw cards for tops, and I got to do it, so I'm hanging on to the last one I still have. Yeah, I love it. You know, uh, let's see here. And then this is one of my favorite cards. I love your gaming chair too. Or I, th- I see that. <laughs> chair. Like yeah, I, I like chair, my chair is so boring. It's just. Well, well, look, you can't tell this from the video, but I'm a pretty big dude. I'm like six, five and, and I might've eaten one too many pizzas through the year. So, <laughs> yeah. so I need a bigger chair to hold me. Yeah. Uh, so this is the last one I'll show you today. I don't want to be that guy pimping all my stuff on TV. You can pimp your stuff all night long. Yeah. <laughs> this is an Adam Wainwright card I did for his wow. uh, charity auction, and it's called Big League Impact he does. Yeah. And he, as you can see, he signed it. And for all the people out there that don't know this man, he is a wonderful human being. That's why I love this card. That's awesome. uh, I did two. The other one sold at the auction at his yeah. event. I held on to this one. And this man – Talk to me for 30 minutes like we were old friends by ourselves. I can't say enough good things about this dude. That's the truth. That's so, all. I love it. That's a special card to me, too. Yeah. I see someone asking about the, the print or painting behind you, asking if it's Al McGinnis. It is Al McGinnis. It is Chopper. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Good job, James. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that your work as well? Uh, yes, yes. So that was one of the first big drawings I did. I, I did it for the MAC club here in St. Louis. My old boss used to be a part of it, and a famous artist here in St. Louis had passed away, so they needed somebody to draw for the banquets, and I did a Marshall Falk that's over to the left, uh-huh. and I did, next year I did this Al McKinnis, yeah. and it's, yeah. uh, let's see, I don't know, yeah, you can see it's signed. Yeah. Uh, so those are two important pieces to me because they were signed, you know. you know. You know how, I mean, I'm sure you understand, so. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So um, and that leads me to a couple other questions. Uh, in your uh, house. Do you hang most of your own art, other people's art, or a combination of both? <laughs> um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, a combination, I would say. Now, in my little drawing area here, by my drawing table, it's all my stuff. Because this is kind of like the sports wing of my area. Yeah. But the rest of my office is all comic book stuff. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. I mean, it is all comic who book are, stuff. Uh, who are some of your favorite comic book characters? Or like, or um, we ain't got, Blake, Blake, we don't have enough time for that, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mar- what do you say? Yeah, Matt says we have plenty of time. <laughs> oh, I'm a Marvel guy myself, okay. so I'm a big, I'm a big X Men guy. I love the X Men, Wolverine, and Captain America. They're probably my two all time favorites. Of course, I like the Avengers, um, but yeah, all Marvel. I, I do, I do like Batman. But that's the only DC character I care for. Got it. Yeah. Thank you, Truth Speaker Sports Memorabilia. They're asking if maybe we'll collab on something. Also, just donated five bucks in the super chat. Appreciate nice. it. Nice. Um, also, okay, so we got a question. Matt's Matt's passing me questions on post-its. Do you have a favorite and most precious card? This is from Andre Andre M. Um, and I guess uh, I'm assuming he means card that he's made, or card. Yeah, card that he card has, you've made. Has or made. Favorite favorite card that you've made? Yes. Oh man, I look. I like a lot of them. And, and again, I keep saying this a lot, but you can appreciate this. The people that don't understand when we when we make artwork, they're all like little children to us when we first make them. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Yep. We put our heart and soul in every piece and every card. And um, I this will sound um, uh, soft and not want to avoid the issue, but I I can honestly say, and I mean this. I love almost every card I've done. I don't mean that to sound arrogant. I've right. just put that much into each one, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, and I mean this with all sincerity, if people think enough of me to add, to pay for a custom piece of my artwork, I, I, I owe it to them to give it my best uh, shot to make it look good. 
Yeah. And this is my business. I'm the boss. I'm the CEO of my own company. And I know that they're going to show it to somebody else. And I want it to look good. I want it to spread. I want, you know, and, and that's how this has happened for me is people get my stuff. They share it with their buddies and then other people reach out to me. You know, you know how it is. You've done the same thing. And I do not. I would love to tell you I have a favorite card, um, but I have about a favorite card about every two or three days, and then I make another favorite card. I, I don't know how else to say it other than that. So the same boat. Totally get that. Totally get so. that. So um, if someone wants to uh, commission uh, you know, a card, uh -huh. do they come to you? Do they bring a photograph? Do they just come with a player and you pick a photograph? Uh, well, do you pick colors? Do you pick – like how does that work? So for me – I generally, first thing I do is ask them who, what player they like, of course. Um, and then um, I love sports. And so I go out and find, I usually do the, I usually find the photos for them because I need good, clean source material. People, oh, I, I like problem. details. I like sparkle in the eyes. I like stuff on the sunglasses. If I can't see it, I can't draw it. I wish I was a better artist. I wish I was a comic book artist and I could just pull it out of my head, scratch it out and roll, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Now, I can look at something and I think I can make it look just as good, if not better than the original photo that I can do. Absolutely. So, so I like to, I like to pick the photos because I know what the athletes about. I know what their signature moves are, their signature look is, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I also know what what a good photo for my artwork will be like. You know, I know that I like I like a lot of artists. I like uh, highlights and shadows and and those kinds of things. And if. Like I like a photo like me staring right at the screen like I am right now. That is boring as hell to me. I don't want to draw that, you know. Um, but but some people like that. If you really have a photo that you like, I'll look at it and see if I can do it. But but like I tell people, if you had a guy come to your house and design, do your plumbing, you wouldn't tell him how to do the plumbing. You would just say, hey, dude, make it look good. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Like, like you, for example, yesterday you're doing the Hank Aaron thing. I was watching that earlier. Yep. You thought of putting those papers in the background, the 74 papers, mm -hmm. and you want to know you want to get the approval from the guy because you don't want to go and do it on your own. Yep. But I'm sure yep. that guy thought, hey, if you think it looks good, I know it'll look good. Yep. <laughs> so I'm good, you know. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for that. Yeah, the super yeah. chat was cool. I had never turned that on before. It's awesome. Um, okay. So, so that's great. Uh, great to know. And then what about timeline? So if somebody comes to you and says, all right, you know, I want to commission something. You guys talk prices, come to an agreement. They say, for example, me, I'm like, all right, I, I like Mark McGuire. Um, if someone, and I'm just trying to lay it all out there so that like, really what I'm trying to get at is I want everyone in the chat, if you're thinking about a card and you want it by Christmas, you better hit them up now, right? Is we kind of like in that realm? Like well, you, yeah, you, you might have already missed the Christmas window. I mean, <laughs> oh man, great job, dude! I'm happy for you. Oh, thanks. I, I booked my first card into March today. So, um, now that being said, I do have some March of I, next year. March of next year, correct? Holy crap, dude! You got to raise your prices. <laughs> you got to. You got to. You, act, you absolutely have to, man. You have to. Even well, if you did, you should do it again, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, man. I'm serious. I want the best and most success for you. And I think that it's great to have that, like, stability and be booked out for, I mean, dude, that's a long time. Yeah, uh, it, it is a long time. Get it up, man. Okay, so, like, think about it. Now you have runway until May, March, May. Wait, I don't remember even what month you just said. March, March, March. March. You have runway until March. You already know what you're working on. You've got time. You've got this whole playground now, and you can test things like that. And uh, you know, you're sending prices individually to people, and, sure. and you can see what sticks, man. And and I think that like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't stop raising your prices until like almost everyone tells you no. <laughs> right? not, just like, not just like the first time, right? You say, you know, you you rate. Let's just say. And I, we don't have to put any number on this right now. Sure. sure. This interview is going to live forever on, on the internet, right? On YouTube. And right. in five, 10 years from now, if somebody's watching this, I don't want them to hear a number that we're talking about and be like, sure. Oh, said this. And, I, so, and I appreciate that from you. <laughs> and, and I do the same thing, you know, with myself. Like I, I have, I do have my prices published publicly on my own website, 
but that that does get updated from time to time. And yeah. I raised my prices uh, pretty recently with the top 2020 success. Anyways, um, whatever the number is, you start sending it out to people. A hundred people, a hundred percent of the people are saying yes. Obviously, that feels really good to have everyone say yes. But there's also going to be more room for you to, I think, uh, capture more revenue. And it's not definitely like. I think that everyone that knows me knows that I'm not all about just making money with art. Sure. Sure. But at the same time, like, you know, you're really good at what you do and you deserve to be compensated for it. And you deserve to live the life that you want to live by sharing your gift with the world. And so like, I want to see you and every other artist make as much money as they can to, so that they can give themselves more opportunities to make more art, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, as you know, you and I have talked about this privately and uh, it was great advice for me. Um, I have taken your advice and, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, cool. I keep going up, man. <laughs> going up. Um, and I'm serious, man. It's just like the one of one cards are, it's just, it's, it's incredible. They're, the cards are amazing. And it's not even in a lot. Like I talk, I've talked about this before that, when I'm selling like a piece of art, it's not even necessarily that I'm selling a painting. It's I'm selling the story behind the painting and my story behind the painting and the buyer's story behind the painting might be different. And if the buyer's story is like really, you know, they're really into it. They have this big emotional connection to the story of the painting. They're going to want that. And I think that like, you know, with what you're doing, you're making these one of one cards with people's favorite athletes or capturing the favorite moments that story is so meaningful to them. And like, that's going to be the crown jewel of their collection. And that actually leads me to another thing is like in the collecting world, um, I'm already learning, like even just myself, like I have a whole closet full of cards that are gorgeous cards. There are, there are definitely, there's some one of ones in there. There's some graded stuff in there, but there's like some of them still just sit in the closet. And I think that if you were charging more, uh, and even myself too, if I was charging more money for my cards or more money for my art, it would make, pe it would make people spend, my art would spend less time in closets as it would on the mantle or on the yeah. shelf. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. It doesn't really matter. Like whether someone pays, you know, 10 bucks for something, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, $10,000, it could all be the same thing. But if somebody spent $10,000 on something, they're going to put it on their mantle. And, yes, right, right. And that will help grow your business just like it would help grow my business um, or any artist. So I, I just think yeah. like there's a lot of different reasons. And if you have if you already have like months of, of runway where like you already know what you're doing, you know how much you're getting paid, you know who you're sending it to. Um, I think that that's such a strong position for you to be in to like kind of push those limits and, and test the boundaries and see like, I don't know, I, I've. I think that your art is is priceless, man. So I would try and get as much as you can out of it, you know. Uh, well, again, you're again. I, I can't thank you enough for all the support you've given me, and, and you've given me great advice. So I would definitely think over what you're saying, and I, I'm definitely not dismissing it. You know that. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I know, I know, because you took the advice so well last time, and it sounds like it's working. Yes, uh, it's great, and I mean, like we talked about before, like if you if you did that, and if you crank the prices floated out there. And if you don't get any hits, then that's okay. Then you can go back to wherever you're at uh, or wherever you're comfortable with. Um, but I just think like, I don't know, man, your art is so dope. I just want to see you like get everything that you want out of life. And I think that uh, <laughs> you're well on the way, which is, which well, is awesome. Well, again, I appreciate that, but I, I do want to say, and I, and I don't mean this to sound hokey again, but I am living a dream. So I've only been at it a few years and I'm, I, I, I get up every day. I get to go do what I want to do. Something I dreamed of doing. I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate it. You know, <laughs> I can appreciate that. Definitely. And there's days when, you know, you get bogged down with the work or for me, one thing I stress relentlessly about is how far out I'm booked because it's almost embarrassing. You know, now I do tell people I work seven days a week, 10 hours a day trying to get caught up. Um, it's not sustainable, uh, but that being said, that's the, you're doing 10 hours, like, 10 hours a day, five, seven days a week. Yes. Drawing, the, drawing these cards. Yes. And you're booked for that much work for months, yeah. months and months, man. Yeah. Like I think, I mean, good for you, dude. It's, it shows like there's obviously there's a market for what you do. It, you have an amazing talent, but man, crank those prices. Like I, I feel like this is how I feel. 
And again, everybody's different. I know you mentioned you had your youngest son was playing a baseball game. Yes. I don't have kids, so it, I'm in a lot different situation where, you know, if I have a rough month, I'm the one that's you know eating ramen, and it's yeah. not it's not a big deal, right? Which right, is right. And I've I've done plenty of that, right? Sure, sure, sure. So sure. take that with a grain of salt. But like, I feel like in that situation, if I'm planning to be like, okay, I'm going to work ten hours a day. Um, I try and find a day off. If you mm -hmm. can say, okay, and I do, and I do, I do, you know, yeah, sure, sure. You know, I try it, but I, I try and budget for that like consistently. And I mean, people here on the stream know, like when I started doing the stream, I did every single night of the week, 10, 23. Uh -huh. it's exhausting. Um, it is exhausting. It's, exhausting. Hours a day. it's a couple hours, one hour, sometimes three hours, sometimes, yeah. but um, I made a change and now I'm doing Monday through Friday. And just those, those two free nights, which, I mean, I still work over the weekend and sure, sure, I'm painting, but I'm I'm just not like it's a little bit different headspace. So that's yeah. really good. But I think like having maybe one to two months booked out at all times is good, right? Because you need yeah. you, know, you have a uh, people to provide for, and so having that, knowing that like I have jobs for next month and the following, yeah. month, I think that that's like a really good comfort zone. I'm not saying completely go down to where you're like every time <laughs> you kill, which I've also been in that position where like, yeah. you know, I've gotten to points where, you know, it's come like 28th, 29th of the month. And I'm like, Oh crap, rent's due for my studio in a couple days. Like I got to go out and hustle and sell a painting. Yeah. Uh, that's a very uncomfortable spot for me to be in because I, I want to always just sell my paintings to people who really want them. I don't want to like, correct, correct. um, and yeah, so I think that there's a sweet spot where you can still have like some pre-orders or like pipeline, but basically being at a threshold where like I think it's okay if like if you're getting hit up and half the people are saying I can't afford it and the other half are saying and then maybe like one quarter of the people are saying, okay, let's go. The other quarter is saying, let me think about it. And then some of them get back to you and do it and not. Like I think that that's actually not a bad spot because even the people that you don't sell to, you obviously they – they believe in what you do. And now they're like, oh, okay, that's what it's worth. Like they, then they've got this goal in their head. And I would bet that a lot of them would come back to you later and say, okay, I've got the money now I'm ready. And at that point you might say, well, prices have gone up or you might say, okay, I'm going to honor the price because this is what we talked about. And I appreciate that you saved up your money for this. Let's make it happen. Um, but I just think it's going to put you in a spot that's going to give you even more, you know, resources, A, for you, like you and your family and everything. And then also just like, it gives you room to grow because right now, if you're, if I don't, and stuck is not the right word because you are, you are blessed. You know, I think in, in the art world, having worked through the, through the beginning of next year is something that almost nobody has in the art world. I have it through Defender because of tops. After that, I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, and I know that that can be scary, but I also think that like, if the equivalent of a tops project 2020 project happened to you, and it, I, I believe that it will at some point. And it might not be a cut, might not be a set. It might be a comic book thing. It might be something totally different. But if something like switched, because all of a sudden there's this extra demand, it's going to be really hard to finish all those works for the part you've already agreed to. And I'm, just, I'm literally, I'm telling you this as like artist to artist. This happened to me with Tops Project 2020. It started to take off, uh, and it's been a, such an amazing project. I have. I got like swamped with commissions mm -hmm. right away. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll get to you. Here's the prices. They lock, like we locked it all in. Um, even last night, like I was working on this Hank Aaron piece. Uh -huh. This piece was commissioned uh, in, uh, I guess, April probably. Uh -huh. so, and that was one of the first commissions from this project. And, and like, I basically kind of put all commissions on hold and, and just have this waiting list building up because I was busy making the top cards, sure. making all this content, doing these live streams, because that's what I felt like was the best thing for my brand. Sure, sure, sure. Like, I mean, I, I got to be honest, man, it was really hard to sit down and work on that Hank Aaron piece, which had been locked in like whatever, four or five months ago at that price, which is, which is totally fine. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Right. no matter what, like you saw, like no matter what, I'm going to give it my best. Sure, I'm not gonna, sure. like I'm going on eBay to buy these Hank Aaron vintage 1974 newspapers because I want the piece just to be sure. bananas. Everything yes. I want to be awesome. But like this is the first among a list of a lot of things that I'm like, oh man, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have booked out so far because 
I have all these other opportunities and now I'm having to like, yeah. balance, like, you know, word is very important. I tell people I'm going to get the, to their painting and I'm going to make them the thing. I'm going to do that. But I also have every day, there's new opportunities that come up that I'm like, oh man, it would be great if I didn't have any commissions, honestly. Yes. So like if my prices had been higher at the beginning, I would have ended up with a lot less commissions. But now I'd be like, okay, great. I'm going to knock out these couple, two, three paintings. Then I've got nothing on my plate and I can commit entirely to X, which is, you know, whatever. So, so I don't well, know. Well, here's, here's my couple of thoughts on what you just said. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So from my vantage point, I can appreciate everything you said. Okay. And you're right. One of my concerns, like I was asked to do a stand mutual project recently. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out how I can work it into my schedule. Now, I don't want to tell all my collectors, but the, the, the cat's out of the bag as we speak. I do break some. I do schedule some breaks into my calendar because I fall behind. Yeah. Um, a project will come up that I really want to do. So I schedule it. If that project or I don't fall behind doesn't come through, I just work through it and I just move everybody up. You know, obviously, I learned that after a year. Um, now, the problem is, though. It's a fine line because you're, you're booking ahead because you want to lock down as much stuff as you can. Yep. And then like for me, I can't speak on yours, but you know, I have a family, so I don't collect all the money up front. I don't like doing that right. for a couple of reasons because yeah. I, I don't, I don't want the person to wonder six months from now, is this guy going to do my stuff? I mean, basically I met him online. I mean, is he trustworthy? I mean, that makes me uncomfortable. I would never do that to someone, but they right. don't know that. Right. right. Totally. Um, and then the other thing is, is I, this sounds dumb. My wife tells me not to worry about it all the time, but, but I don't want to collect payment for something and then do it seven months later. Cause then when I'm doing it, it feels like I'm doing it for free as, as dumb as that may sound. No, that a hundred percent. I totally agree with you on that. So, so now, like you said, that doesn't bother me per se doing it for free. Cause the, one of the things I do, I love what I do. So I love drawing one of the, one of the benefits of drawing one of one cards, like you, you, you work on a project. It takes you several days. You got to read, you know, blah, blah, blah. I get, to, I've drawn almost every athlete. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, like people ask, who would you like to draw? I've pretty much drawn everybody, you know, and I love it. There's guys I haven't drawn yet that I want to redraw or I, I want to do a different pose, whatever. But that's the beautiful thing about what I do is I get to draw almost everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem for me, and, and I don't mean to air my finances on the, on the YouTube, but I will because you and I are having a conversation. Yeah. I have to provide so much money every couple of weeks, right? Yep. So if, if, let's say, let's just say I stop booking cards out in advance, okay? Now that money stream that I'm counting on for, for – cards in the future deposits if you will because i don't I'm, I'm not the february card hasn't been paid for yet it's only had i only have the deposit which i've already used right mm -hmm. so suddenly there's a my revenue stream comes to a halt it's a it's a balancing act for me that i don't quite have a good handle for yet if that makes sense to you yeah. you know i'm trying to understand it better um, I, you know, I, you know, as you know, we got to pay our taxes. There's no, there's no office taking our tax money out for us. We got to account for that, you yep. know, supplies. I never knew, you know, I mean, look for all the people out there, this is just my extra markers. <laughs> you know? Wow. These are just, cause I go through them so fast. Yeah. These, are, these, everyone who knows these knows how much these cost. Right. Uh, but I can't afford at midnight to run out of a color. You know what I mean? I have to be able to to draw with that color when I need it. So right. Right. all the finances are a balancing act that I don't quite have figured out yet. I mean, I'm not I'm not starving, nothing like that. But I also don't have enough saved up that I can afford a long stretch of no income of some sort. If that makes sense. Sure. sure. So I, ha I have an idea. Uh huh. I, I have no uh -huh. idea. Um. I feel like I feel like you're a very personable guy. I mean, everyone is saying in the comments, "Man, I'd love to have a beer with Ken." Like Ken's so cool. Like like I think that people would love to see more of you, and I think there could be an opportunity. And honestly, I'm I'm new to the platform, so I don't know for sure, but like something like a Patreon, which is uh are you familiar with Patreon at all? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. So, it's used for all kinds of different things. Matt and I set it up for the podcast that we're starting. And so people are paying monthly and it's really low, like two bucks a month, five bucks a month or 12 bucks a month. And the $2 a month is just saying, I support what you're doing. There's really no 
extra content. The five dollars uh-huh. month gets a little bit of bonus content where it's um you know we record a podcast episode and then he and I do kind of an after show where we talk about uh, you know you get a little behind the scenes and then the twelve dollars a month they're getting you know all that plus more extra content plus every once in a while we'll send them like free gifts and it could be sure. like a card or it could be a book it could be all kinds of things in my case a print or a hat sure a print or a hat sure right. um but in general you know and people have used patreon for podcasts movies uh you know if they want to make a short film if they you know artists make it just to say like if you want to support my art because there, I think that there's a lot of people out there, part, some of them including people that have already purchased cards from you, that you know maybe they're not ready for whatever reason. It could be financial. It could be because they you already painted their favorite player. But like they want to see you succeed, and they could throw five bucks at you, and it's not gonna you know it's not gonna hurt them. And you, those people add up, man. And I think that you could get to a spot, and I, I don't know, and, I, and we can have a conversation offline just talking about how some of the perks could work. Um, and making it so that, like, I would like to set it up in a way where it's not really a lot of extra work for you, but for the people that are that are involved, they're getting a little bit more kind of behind the scenes content of watching you do your thing. Because yeah. I would be fascinated, even if it was just um, time lapse videos of you drawing the card. I would, I would, I would literally pay to see that. And so, could be an opportunity. And and the cool thing is, is it's free to start. You know, it's, it does take a little bit of time, which I know is you got time. <laughs> you got to spend it on baseball cards, but you know, it's going be a cool thing. Like F dot, I don't know if you know F dot. He's one of the other artists. Um, uh, I, I saw. I, I did a little research. Yes, I'm familiar. I'm familiar. So he he has a he started a Patreon for his Tops 2020 thing, and they, he shows them like the behind the scenes of making the cards, and then he also gives them early access to buying his autographed cards. And so, and those people are literally paying him money to be able to pay him more money. <laughs> right? And so if sometimes like if you made, uh, let's just say like you took two, I, I don't really know the time and we don't have to get into like how long it yeah. takes to pay the card. But if you set aside like two days per month or something that was like working on, spe- we'll just say special projects. Sure. People, people within the Patreon are able to access like that calendar to say, okay, well, I get to kind of skip the line, but but I still I have to wait in a line. It's just a different line, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing, honestly. Like it's just off the cuff. But I think that like the cool thing is, is you get this momentum, you build it up. Like Eric has 450 patrons. I don't know what the average patron is paying, uh-huh. but even if it was paying two dollars a person. That's almost a thousand bucks a month that's coming like clockwork. And actually that's it's his is actually per card. So it's hits twice a month. So he's getting, I mean, if it could be two thousand dollars a month, and and what he's doing is he's giving the access. He's saying, here's a picture of me uh, doing my card, here's a video of me talking about how this card is important to me. And I don't know, I mean, I would even be willing to like connect you and Eric, whether we have like a three-way phone call or like literally just connect you guys. And have him talk to you about it because I don't know the behind the scenes of how mm-hmm. or how, how lucrative it actually is. But I just know that, um, you know, hearing your story and thinking, OK, well, if you're booked up and you can't just paint more stuff between now and March or whatever, uh, what are some other ways that we can, like, make you more money without uh, having to paint more stuff or like find more hours in the day because those don't exist. Right. And you have a family, you got to spend time with them. Like maybe it's just turning a camera on and showing people behind the scenes. I don't know. Uh, just an idea. Well, here, let's do this. I will gladly talk to you off, off air about it because I, as you know, I'm open to almost anything. At least I'm open to any ideas, you know? Um, again, it's just all, it's all new to me. And as you know, man, there's so much stuff besides just drawing the cards, you know, it's the business stuff you got to account for the mailing stuff. Like my family's always asking me, what can we do to help? And, and I don't really know what they can do to help, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I'll give an example. And this is not just to pump you and you or Matt's head, but you 
you guys had I up last night in your feed last night, okay? So people knew I was going to be on. Well, I woke up this morning with five requests for, hey, we saw you on, we saw your name last night on Blake's show, you know, we like, which is great. I mean, I, that's the power you guys have, by the way. Um, we, we like to talk to you about cards. Well, then you got to spend, not got to spend, that's unfair to say. Then you spend the time, you know, uh, nursing the sales, walking people through stuff, and I don't trust anyone else to do any of that stuff. I, I think one of the reasons that uh, I've had success, not just because of my artwork, because I like the people, you know, and they can tell I like them. You know what I mean? Um, they will, they'll reach out to me. They'll, they'll get my cards and then they'll send me photos after they get in the mail. Hey man, look at my car next to my stuff. And again, like I told you, I'm still new enough to it. That I still get a kick out of that. You know, um, it, it makes you feel good when someone likes your stuff and, and tells you good things about it. I mean, that's just life. People like to hear good stuff about themselves, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's hard for me. I can't, there's not, I haven't been able to find the stuff I need to delegate. That's part of my problem, you know? And then unfortunately, as I started, I thought I would get faster because early on I would struggle just looking at the colors. How do I make that color? You know? Yeah. yeah. Now I, I have that kind of down. But as I've, as I've done it, the things I've learned is this. I'm starting to see colors I never saw before. I see purples. I see purples and brown. I see reds and, and blues that I didn't even see before, you know. Well, now you want to get those into your cards, you know. You want to you show that. And they make them so, it makes them so much better. You know, those are my favorite cards. And, uh, and then the more, the faster I got, that allowed me to do more detail. You know, I got better with my pencils. I got better with my markers. And, and instead of speeding the card up, I actually put more time into it now than I was before doing them faster. Yep. But, 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 that, but that being said, to be honest, I'm blessed with all the support I get from the people that get my stuff. And it seems to be working for me. So I don't, I don't want to go back the other way, you know? So. No, man, I think you're definitely on the right path. Um, I saw someone else had a good idea uh, suggesting, and, and you might already, but sell the hats. Well, I, it's, that's a funny, that, that's a funny story. So I, I got, to, so my, my kids play a lot of sports. Okay. Yep. And I'm the son all, and if you go to the ballpark, you need, I always crack up the people that can't see because the sun, that's why they're baseball hats. So I, I thought, you know what? I want to get my own hats. I've always liked, I've always, I used to be in the apparel business. Okay. So I, I like hats. So I'm going to get my own hats, you know? So one night I didn't have anything to post, you know, you know, you and I know as artists, we're always trying to post stuff, you know, it keeps people interested in your stuff. So I didn't have anything to post one night. I got my hats. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to post my hats, you know, what the heck? And I figured I'd sell a couple to some people I know, you know, but I spent the next three hours taking hat orders, you know, which I couldn't believe it caught me off guard. So, yes, I, in fact, I'm going to have to, one of the things I do, I'm going to do when I get a little downtime is I'm going to put another hat display out and, and, uh, offer up some more hats again. So <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that, you know, I, love it. I, love it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Uh, let's see here. We have a question from James that asks, Favorite St. Louis athlete ever? Oh, that's an easy one for me. I, there's two for me. Okay, these are easy for me. Yeah. The first one is Stan Musial for me. Okay, is my dad's favorite player. It's the, one of the very first great pieces of art I ever made was a Stan Musial drawing for my dad. I think for Christmas, and it was the first one that I ever did when I was done. I thought, man, that turned out as good or better than I thought it could be. You know. Um, so he is my favorite. Plus, from all accounts, he was a wonderful human being. I haven't heard a bad story about him yet. And if anybody out there has one, save it. I don't want to hear it. You know. <laughs> so Stan is my all one of my. He is my all time favorite guy. Um, in fact, I do stuff for his found his family and foundation now, which I'm blessed to do. Um, so that's great for me. And then my other one, and this is somewhat unpopular in St. Louis, maybe I don't know, but Albert Pujols is my other favorite player because he was my he was my generation Stan Musial. He is the best hitter I have ever seen. Period in his prime. It's not, it's not debatable. Yeah. So so I love Albert. I love it. We got another question. Okay, this is from Andrew Trujillo asks how thick are your cards so we kind of already went over that andy uh, um he's got like a what is it like a card stock yeah yeah, yeah yeah let's see if i can show it on camera again for him because i get that question a lot so yeah. let's see if this shows up so yeah. let's do this i got a picture of this somewhere on my phone because i get this a lot but we'll just do it on on live uh youtube here so here's a regular card we'll see if we can get this see how thin that's a regular baseball card I got to pull any tricks. <laughs> and um, 
here's one of mine. Matt. So there's the there's the difference. Yeah. I don't know if, so I don't it know if it's showing like, up. There you go. There's the best shot. Guessing, but I would guess that's like probably like a 75 point, 100 point. Yeah. Um, it fits a hundred point case pretty easily, but I'm not real good with that. But again, there's the great. Anyway, yeah, thick. I like it. Premium. Yes. Well, one of the one I one thing I will say about my cards, and you know this as well, you photograph your artwork, it never looks as good as the as the original. You know that, okay? So when you first start doing it, you, you take the photo, you're like, oh crap, man. I hope the guy likes it because it doesn't really. I can't get the right photo, right? Right. But but when they, I know. I've been fortunate most everybody likes my photos I send them, so I know they're going to like the card because the card is so much better in hand. And I don't think until you get one, you realize how thick it is, how sturdy it is, all those things. So, And you know what that reminded me of is I got uh, – so I'm sure you've seen the – the Monday mail day, mail Mondays. Yes. yes. And people in this hobby are so generous. And you they know, are. It's crazy. What I, really like, what I really, really like is that they, they, it's not just that they're sending stuff to me, that they're, they're paying attention and they're sending stuff to everyone else on the team. Like to yeah. me, that honestly, like it means more because yeah, for sure, for sure. I can really that. make everything that I do possible and without yeah. them, I would not be able to do the business that I do. And so when the guys get mail is like, the best thing, the best feeling. For yeah, me. right. I can and, see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody bought a Don Mattingly one of one from you. Yes. Don sign it. Yeah. They sent it to me to give to Tony. Yes. And so, and that's actually the first time. And I don't remember if that was before or after the tweet. It was I, right around the same time. It's just coincidentally. Yeah. To be honest. So Tony Shrek had, had made the tweet. He, he was also in the comments earlier. He said, yes. oh, he made that. Um, I wish, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe he's the one that sent the card too. Honestly, no, I, I know who sent it. You do know a guy, a guy's name is a guy's name is Jason Thompson. I believe his last name is Thompson. I, I've been confused today, but he's he actually donated to you today. I think uh, Truth. Uh, I, I I get caught on the truth. Uh, yes, that's him. I'm almost positive that's that's his Twitter handle. But his name's his name's Jason. Jason, if you're out, if you're still on here, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yes. So he yeah. actually reached he actually reached out to me and asked me, I have a Don Manley card. Yeah. And that was one of them I was not gonna part with. It was one of my first good cards that I felt really good about. I had him I had him sign it. He was my favorite. Yeah, there he is. That's me. That's him. That's him right there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he uh he's a guy in Don Manley. I said, I do, but I go, I'm not parting with it. I'm just letting you know. You know. And he's like, Well, you know, what what's what let's see if you'll part with it, basically. Yeah, you know? okay. yeah. So I'm like, Well man, what would I what kind of price would I because I never dreamed of selling it was one I was gonna keep forever. Um, so I, I gave him a price that I didn't think he would go for and he, he didn't bat an eye, which makes you think I probably should ask for more, as you would oh, say. Oh, <laughs> so anyway, That's he so told me cool. yeah, he told me he was gonna send it to you. And he's like, Look, I'm gonna send this along. To, to one of Blake's guys, and I'm like, okay, great, man, you know, whatever. And then I swear, within a couple of days, so, uh, Tony Shrek hit me up in that tweet uh, Twitter strand. So it was all kind of coincidental, you know. Yeah. That's Yeah, well, I believe that too, but I didn't want to say that. I want to sound hokey. <laughs> I'm hokey as shit. <laughs> um, man, that's pretty cool. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think. Of, you ever do any? You ever paint on anything else, or, or draw uh, on baseball, for example, or any other surface? No, you know what? You know, I um, most of my life, I've I've only drawn with colored pencils most of my life. Okay, yeah. and then when I met with that Stephen Wall, and he's like, you know, you ought to try other stuff, other mediums, you know. Yeah. So I I tried some markers, some Copic markers, and man, I loved them right from the start. So, so I, I, uh, I draw with pencil and markers. One of the things I like to do is I like to learn to paint, you know, cause I can do bigger pieces, you know, sure. uh, but I, I, I don't have a lot of time as we've already discussed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah someone, uh, Killigoin, Killigoin, yeah. Killigoin yeah. asked how big do your pieces get? So that kind of, yeah. Kinda, yeah. Ties in. Yeah. So, so my largest ones I normally draw are 16 by 20s. I've done bigger. I've done 18 by 24s. I think you know I try to I try to draw them in sizes that you can get them framed easily and cheaply. Um, 
Uh, but, uh, man, they take so long. Pencil, I mean, the people that do a pencil, you know what I mean. It's, it's mind-numbing how long it takes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, then, and I was going to ask you, and one of the questions I have for you, actually, is I saw you cutting, okay? First of all, where did you get that sweet-ass knife that's fat as, I won't use the word I want to say, but it's fat? Cause yeah. So, believe it or not, uh, I got it at Michael's. You got that knife handle at Michael's? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And it's crazy because – so usually I get my art supplies from Blick. Uh, everybody does, it seems I like. I really like Blick. It's – you know, uh, they need to have a lot of like the, the you know, off-the-shelf pro-grade stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Michael's is a little bit – to me, a little bit more of a hobbyist type of shop. Yeah. But man, the – um, you know, the handles that you see at Blick all look like a pen. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. And it's not comfortable to hold. No. And I don't have one in here, but they have this like rubber ergonomic one at Michael's. And so whenever I'm actually at Michael's, uh, you know, when I'm traveling, Michael's, I find Michael's everywhere. Yeah, you can find it everywhere. You know, I was at, um, uh, at Art Basel and I had to get a frame for a piece uh, that I was showing and like found a Michael's. And like anytime I'm in there, I'll go in and just pick up a few more of those handles. They seem to have them everywhere. They're pink, and they're ju I just love them. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go there. I have one literally less than a mile from my house. Yeah. Although I will say, and I don't want to hurt Michael's feelings, but I hate going in that place because the stuff I buy is the Copic markers when I have to, and they're in a case with a lock. Okay. So the, and I understand you know, why. for the coupon though, because there's always a fifty. Oh yeah, coupon. that's the best part. I, I don't ever go in there. If you, if you go in there without a coupon, you've done something wrong. Okay, yeah, get sure. <laughs> but but I, I buy all my frames there because you can't beat the deal on the frames. Yeah. But but anyway, I'll go in there and I gotta wait for somebody to come lock, unlock the case. It's a complete. And I don't. I mean, look, I don't got. 20 minutes for somebody to come over and unlock the case. And again, it just drives me crazy. I, I've gotten to the point where I ref almost refuse to go in there unless I absolutely have to. But I am going to go in there for one of those handles because my hand gives me problems periodically. Sure. You know, from just, yeah. and I squeeze the, I find myself squeezing the shit out of my pencils and pens, man. It drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything like, um, maybe it could be an opportunity to invent, but like, Almost like something that you put the pen in, and then it and then it has like ergonomic kind of, yeah, like a it's, little almost like a sleeve or something like. It's funny you say that because I've actually looked for something like that. You know, I thought it'd be worth my time, but but here's the other problem. One of the problems I have with what I do is I have to sharpen my pencil. I, I literally almost have to draw a line and sharpen, draw a line, sharpen, because everything is so small. Right. If my pencil isn't needlepoint sharp, I can't get the details I need to get. So exactly. I, my yeah, it reminds me, they're, they're, I do remember like little, almost like little kind of rubber sleeves that you yes. put in a pencil and then it yeah. a little bit grippier. I've looked for those. I can't find them. Can you believe that? Man. Okay. We gotta, yeah. We got to find something like that. Cause I think that would be, that would be helpful. Um, man, that's awesome. That's, that's crazy. Like, trying to think like they, so they don't make like mechanical colored pencils huh no 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 and they, the ones that i use the yeah i use the prisma colors and they break all the time i mean i, I just i uh overdo it i mean i i squeeze it like it's a, my life coming out of it you know i have to tell myself all the time relax your hand relax your hand you know totally 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 um and i, I know we're like taking like a bunch of steps back because we already kind of went through your path to here but mm -hmm. did you study art did you go to art school you know i did i, I went to missouri state at the time of southwest missouri state that's how old i am okay. and they in my state they had a pretty good uh they have a pretty good art program there so i went down there and as a kid you know i used to always i collected baseball cards as a kid i stumbled across the beckett magazine and they had the drawings in the back i don't know if you remember that so I always go look at the sports art in the back, and then I would draw in, in school and at home, you know, mimic the drawings. I wouldn't draw those. I would just draw my favorite athletes um, and Diamond King cars, of course. Um, and, of course, I dreamed of doing that, but then life gets in the way. I went to school to do it, and I got down to school. I ended up in a graphic design program. You're familiar with what that is. It has nothing to do with what I wanted to do, you know. But as, as a kid, I didn't understand that, you know. And my parents, they tried to help me, but they didn't understand either. It's not their fault. 
So we just kind of went with what they told us to do. You know, I get down there and that is not what I wanted to do. So I eventually I got a degree called image and illustration production or something like that. I don't even know if it exists. It did down there. Um, and then I went on and I, and I basically took the first, you know, job I could get doing it, you know, and it was in a t-shirt shop, you know? Um, yeah, I worked, I was a t-shirt artist, gosh, up until two years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Yeah. Crazy. Like, like silk screening stuff. Uh Uh Awesome. Do you yeah, still like so plug on that? Because I'm interested in doing some shirts. Oh yeah, yeah. Anytime you need some stuff, you let me know. They do great work, and they would gladly hook hook you up through me. And you know, I watch you do your stencils, and I don't know how much you know about screen printing, but that's a lot what screen printing is. You know, yeah. we just don't cut them by hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are they? Uh, and a lot of people with the when they're doing the stencils, cutting a ruby lift. Yes, right? I see. Yes. Now they don't. Now you don't have that anymore. But when I started. So I'm I'm not as good with a knife as you, I'm sure, but I'm pretty good with a knife because I had to cut ruby with ruby lift, you know. Yeah. So anytime you want to separate colors, like you do, kind of in a different format, of course, yep. you had to separate each color off the main film with ruby lift. Yep, absolutely. Well done. Well done. Yeah, I've 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 dabbled a little bit, but the hardest part for me was burning the screens. Yes, you got to you know always, somebody can do it. Too much, or I wouldn't yeah. do enough, and everything would wash out. That was a problem. But I was also I was doing it. I had like kind of a crappy bulb and then, and then that didn't really work. So then I just literally <laughs> put it out in the sun, but like every day the sun is different strength because of the class, yes. because of the distance from the sun. Like, so it's like a <laughs> game. Um, but I, I did a few and it was, it was challenging, man. Um, instead yeah, yeah. of doing this on those, I printed uh, my, I basically Photoshop in Photoshop. I like made a stencil, printed it on a transparency uh-huh. and, then, and then used that. But yeah, I, I struggled with that. I think it's, it's, it's a fascinating medium to me, but it was- Now, did you, is that how you got started with your stencils then? Was was that was your first way of doing it? No, I had done stencils for a couple of years. Um, uh-huh. And then I was just interested in trying a new medium. I mean, really yeah, yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like it's, I'm, I love Andy Warhol. Uh-huh. And I would find as many, like I would always just scour the internet for videos of him in his studio, like actually working. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I mean, I saw just some screen printing stuff and I was like, man, I really want to try and do that. So I, I just tried to take some of my existing art and turn it into a silk screen and really struggled with it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, well, if you, I will tell you this. If you had the, the facility and now you could because of the people you know to shoot the screens for you, right. It, right. it works really well. Because, I mean, it's surprising how well it does work And if you don't know how it works. I mean, it is unbelievable how well it does work. But right. you better have somebody you can spray it out and shoot the screens for you. Because, like you said, it's, it's very finicky. It's photosensitive material. So it, it's not yeah. easy to do. Yeah. And it's also tough. So in this ba- building, which is gorgeous and big and vaulted ceilings, and there's a lot of perks. Uh-huh. But one of the downsides is there's like one – slop sink and then, yeah. and then just the sinks in the bathrooms so like there's no there's no way that i could wash the screens out correct I could, correct I really do this i couldn't really do silk screening here and so i think if there was like if there was a shower with a detachable shower head that i could like you know clean the screens out i would i would have been doing a lot more silk screen since moving well on. i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a little tip okay you can go to a car wash and spray those screens out uh-huh. in a pinch so I like that, but I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you New Yorkers, an Uber. <laughs> you New Yorkers or something, man. <laughs> I, know. I know, but I could see that actually putting putting the screens all. I mean, I've got like you know big big bags that I keep my art in. Yeah, bags, and I could put a bunch of them in there and take them there. Yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, uh, but why do it? I mean, your your method to me, and I'm not saying it because you're on the air. It's a better method because it's it's uh, for a lack of a better term, it's more artsy. You know what I mean? Sure. You, you're doing it by hand, and you get to, you know, you get to cut it by hand. And some of the flaws are work in your favor, as you know. Some don't. You know, all those things. But it's more hands on that way. I, I feel your ways is better. I'm not just saying it because I'm on the show. It's just the truth. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think like I like the systems that I've felt that I figured out, and I think sure. there's a lot of things that work really well about my process. But also, uh, and I'm sure you understand, like, 
I don't know. Sometimes as an artist, when I do the same thing over and over and over again, I like, I want to push the boundaries and I want to test yeah. stuff. So, you know, I'm doing it in different ways. I'm experimenting with some mixed media stuff or yeah. trying to do more painting by hand and less with, uh, with a can. Yeah. So, I try, but I definitely like, I still think like long-term silk screen is just really interesting to me, both like on t-shirts or on any can anything other than canvas, but also on canvas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see, but I appreciate it. Very much. I, I, I got a little uh, silk screen press here at my house. I've actually done some things with it, but uh, now that I no longer have access to shooting and spraying out screens, that's kind of went dead on me. Um, right. right. Um, but I will say this, you touched on something that I wanted to ask you about, because it, it's one of the things that's always concerning to me as an artist, you get, it's, you get in a rut of doing something that, that works, right? I wouldn't call it a rut. But, right, right. But you know what I mean. Okay, you get, you get, hey, thank you. That's a better word. Thank you. You get in the habit of doing something that works for you. I'm the same yeah. way. Yeah. And you say to yourself, okay, this person commissioned this project because they like this way I do things. Yes. Right? Yeah. But then you say to yourself, for me to improve, I need to try other things, okay? And you're, and there's a constant struggle of, am I going to, is it going to work out, you know? Because it's, it's, it's un, uncharted territory, if you will, you know? Yeah. Um, but you, you, you also know that when it does work out, it's some of the best stuff you've ever done, right? Yep. So it, that's, a, that's a tough balancing act for me because, like, right now, I, I got to – I feel like I have a nice rhythm to what I'm doing to stuff. I hate to sound artsy, but I do. I feel I have a nice rhythm, but I also know I can't stay in this rhythm forever. If that makes sense, you know, yeah, it so it's hard for me to understand what is the next way to go for years. I chased trying to find a style. I, I chased trying to find backgrounds and these backgrounds behind me aren't very good because they were forced, you know, I didn't know what else to do. So, um, only when I started with watercolor and, and some of my bigger pieces have those when people see them, did I, I mean, a lot of times I'm doing those, I'm like, oh my God, that looks awful, you know? But my daughter, who's who's always um, very bluntly honest with me, she'll look at some of them and say, dad, that's just, that's got awful bad. Or she'll say, dad, I think that's better than you think it is. I think that's right, you know? So yeah. I, I've learned to trust her because she's been right. She's 21. Awesome. So she's, she's been pretty right about stuff. But some of my best stuff is stuff that I didn't think was good to start and it got better as i went you know mm -hmm. and, and like, like I, I i said i wouldn't do this other, but i want to show you because you can appreciate this so i just finished this dale murphy 11 by dude that's gorgeous uh and you what 11, did you did you epoxy that or no that so what it is is here that's a better view so the body is basically marker and color pencil i'm trying to use more and more marker because not many people use it on this big stuff i think it's kind of unique if you will okay yeah. Um, but the background started out as watercolor. I hated how it looked. Okay. It looked awful. Okay. And then I, I just started putting acrylic paint on there and I just started splashing it on there and moving it around. And the next thing I know, man, I, I'm really, now so no one else may not like this, but I really like it, you know? I love it. And it started out as something I've never tried before, basically. But this is what I'm talking about. This turned out really good. Yeah. But what I, my routine before this was watercolor and all that stuff. And I liked it, but the watercolor on this one didn't, it wasn't going well. It was a mess, actually. Yeah. And uh, I tried some acrylic paint, man. I'm really happy with that. That's the fun part of art, as you know, when you try something, it works. Um, unfortunately, not all of it works. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's all the with all the work oh, everyone would be an artist. Right, right, right. But then you invest a bunch of time laying it out and getting it all started, and then it doesn't work. You're like, oh, man, I just lost two days worth of time, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a struggle. So It's interesting. So I think I have pushed my own creative boundaries with kind of what I call like my artistic playground. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And some like – some amazing pieces of art. Some of my favorite art I've ever done has come out of the playground. And I look at like when I spend time in the playground is always literally whenever I get the most amount of commissions or the most amount of controlling commissions with kind of rules and boundaries. Uh -huh. um, like I did this very, um, I mean, it was awesome. It was for an agency, a uh, talent agency in LA they commissioned several very large works, but they were very strict on like exactly how it would be. And making sure that the mock-ups were like 
very close to what the final piece was going to be. And I'm like, that's not usually how I do mock-ups, but yeah, gosh. Anyways, it's like they put me in this box and I was very grateful to have the work. It paid, yeah. paid well, right. but um, I would get, I would basically spend during the time that, that I was working on that project. And this was like, I probably spent two or three weeks on these couple paintings and I would spend like as much time as I could on the corporate like rules, yeah, like paying the bills. And then as soon as I was like, all right, I just can't do it anymore for the day. <laughs> I, would, like, go, I would go to a completely different room. And this was in my parents' house. They have a two acre property. It's kind of like a ranch. And my studio there is in this like old barn. And so uh-huh. it's horse stalls. And so I have like several different stalls, um, which usually I'll have like one of them is epoxy and photography. One is painting, like canvas storage. One is my painting room. Uh, one is kind of miscellaneous, like shipping supplies. Yeah, I yeah. Up where I had like two creative spaces and like I would do as much as I could on this thing in this like box of like how I had to do it. And then I would go into the other room and I would just try and like my main goal was like, I just want to do whatever I want. I don't want it to be like anything I've ever done before. Yeah, yeah. Care, good or bad. I just want to like play. And like, and I think that some of my best work has come out of like, Th- that one instance and then also several instances like that where like i just get busy with commissions and as soon as i feel like when i wake up and i'm like oh man this is kind of like a job yeah when i'll go and spend some time um doing something for myself just to play and, and for fun. yeah man that, i mean you, you nailed it right on I, I i guarantee you you won't say this there's no way where you're at right now you would do those commission work for that people those people again like that no way you would That's you know hard. And, and I, I don't understand why you would, you would not go to a five star restaurant and tell the cook how to f- fix the meal. I don't understand why people can't under, can't get that. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if you if you wanted it done this way, then have somebody who does it that way all the time do it that way. Because yeah. when it's, I just I, you know I, I've never understood that. I don't anybody who comes to my house, whether it's landscaping or building a room, what do you want, Mr. Carl? Hey, you do what you think looks good because I'm an artist and I know you just basically, you just challenge me to do the best I can do. Right. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I agree. You know, yeah. So there, I think there's two things and, and these are, I don't know, frustrating is not the right word. It's just part of the game, but there's that like people telling you how to do your job. Um, and I can take that to a certain extent, um, sure. you know, whatever. Uh, and then there's also the, how long does that take you? And then there's <laughs> the time value based on how long it takes. Yeah. And I had like, I had this epiphany, epiphany one day when I was working with, uh, I've done a lot with NFL players, uh-huh. ton, more than any other sport. NFL is kind of my, was my niche for a long time. And after a couple guys had asked, like, you know, oh, how much for a painting? And I give them the price and they're like, well, yeah. how, much, how long does it take you? And, um, and it's more like, not like, not like, you know, they're excited to get it. They're like, they're trying yeah. to haggle with me. They're like, oh, they, you know, cause I'm always painting and sharing my process. And to be honest, I paint really fast. Uh, yeah. People can finish a painting, start to finish on a stream before we go to, we all leave and go to bed. Like the painting's done. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so when people say, oh, well, how long does it take you? Uh, I ask them how long a football game is. And they're like, well, it's an hour. I'm like, are you getting paid for the hour or are you getting paid for all the double days and the practice and skipping going out with your friends and all the work that you put in? That's why they pay you, not for the hour you're playing the game. Um, and they're always like, respect. You know, they, they like, they get it, right? Um, yeah. And so, uh, I, uh, go ahead. I heard you sell this to Lauren on your yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought to myself, the one question I hate the most is that question. Mm-hmm. How long does it take? And I know people are really, in all honesty, they're just interested. Most people are just interested, okay? Yeah. And they ask it a lot on my Facebook pages or in the, in the social media stream, and I always tell them, look, I, you know, it just takes a long time. I don't want to say because I don't want – first of all, someone's going to do the math on how long it takes and say that's a, you're making too much money, and then someone else is going to say, man, that doesn't make it worth very much money. You're not making much money as a, as a person doing it that for that price, right? Yeah. Yep. And I never really understood how to answer that question. And I, I want I, I want to thank you because you gave me that answer on Lauren's with her and you just said it again. Yeah. And truer words have never been said. And I want to thank you for saying that. I now have an answer for that question I can live with moving forward. Yeah. And, and, for, and, the, and the other thing that the other one that I've run with, and I don't remember if I mentioned this on Lauren's stream, but people will be like, 
Uh, so they'll see a painting that I made and they'll be like, how long did it take you to make that? And I say 35 years because I'm right. 30, right? Um, and then, and that also ties into like a Picasso quote that my dad shared last time when we were on with Lauren, where he says I spent my entire life learning to draw like a child. Uh, <laughs> it's like really cool, right? It, 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 it yeah. takes like a long time to like deconstruct and like forget all the extra stuff that's up here. So yes. yeah, I think like, I get it, man. That's it's, uh, for the cure from the curiosity standpoint, I get it. I don't care. I'll tell people, sure. I can paint it. I can make a painting in a day, but that doesn't make the painting worth any less than a painting. I no. um, I think. And, and nor should it. Right. If you could do one of your pieces of art in five minutes and it looks like it does, who cares? Right. You know, right. I mean, if they didn't know the time frame, you could sell it for what you're selling it for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't, uh, I don't understand it. And, and I, I, for the life of me, I I, a, I get I get the question because people are just trying to be interested, right? But but still, right, right, right. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh, that's all right. <laughs> it's part of, part of the adventure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so you're a one man show. Yeah, right? yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. No, it's, it's all good. It's all good. What do you think? Um, what do you think is the one thing that you, I know you've, we talked about delegating, right? And I'm just mm -hmm. like, just me and like artist curiosity mode. What is the one thing that you wish you didn't have to spend time doing? Man, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, you gotta give me a minute to think about that. Cause this, again, this will sound dumb, but I, I gotta be honest with you. I love almost every part of it. That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, I was, just, I was just telling my daughter today when she was talking to me about it. Um, I like the sales part of it. You know, I like talking to people. Uh, I, I like the rush of the sale, you know, when, when you get the sale, it makes you feel good. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, you, you let people, uh, people know that you, they like your stuff. So that, I like that part of it. I actually like the, I like the business part of it. I like, um, figuring new ways to do stuff. Like I, when you talk to me, I, I like hearing people's ideas, um, to help me. I, I think it's great. That's interesting to me. You know, I find myself paying attention to other people's business now, see what they're doing that I could incorporate into mine. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I even like the mailing cause I like packaging. I love the really, Oh man, I hate that part. <laughs> well, I like, I like packaging. Now, I will say this. I thought my packaging was pretty good. And then I saw some of your guys's and those cases, you guys put them down in. Oh, come on, man. That just well, that ruined my hurts me, man. I just started doing certificates of authenticity with this project. Like we've, we were, and honestly, like, I mean, I've seen what some of the other artists are uh, doing, by the way, speaking of other artists, F dot in the building. What is that, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's up? So what's up? You guys, you do great stuff. Eric, by the way, uh, I was telling Ken about how you're crushing it on Patreon. I'm going to connect you guys uh, if you have any tips. Honestly, I would love some tips too because I just started one. But I think it actually could work really well for what he's doing. So we'll follow up on that later. Um, yeah, man. I think that like the artists within the project are all stepping their game up, doing these beautiful, beautiful presentations of their card. Yeah. And yeah. like, I mean, the painted boxes is cool. Um, what King Saladin has done with the custom box of his bear card. I don't know if you yeah, see. I mean, it, it, it's absolutely banana. I know. Got the wax seal. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can't, cool. you can't compete with all that, you know. I, again, yeah. I think. Yeah, so you know that, like that presentation, the the painted box, the wax seal, the certificate of authenticity, the special container, whatever it is, I consider that all part of the art piece. Yeah. My pet peeve is actually physically boxing it up, putting the address on it, taking it to the post office, and shipping it. Now I'm so grateful that I figured this out when I did, but like even just getting a label printer, a Dymo, yeah. XL, and which it, I don't have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you one. Uh, they're 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 a game changer, man. Um, and then pairing that with like, um, and I know that F Dot's using a different service. Maybe he can comment down below. But uh, I'm using Shippo, GoShippo.com, mm -hmm. and that's like linked up to my e-commerce site. So like. I get an order, the order goes into Shippo so it knows what address to print out. I click print, it prints on the label, it's sticky, I put it on the thing. That's made it better, but like, man, it used to be like, especially because I was doing all big paintings and I would have to spend days boxing them up, typing up the label, printing them out, yeah. them to FedEx or UPS, 
waiting in line, having them weigh it, paying for it. <laughs> and then, and then like, you know, you go to UPS, they print out the, uh, the receipt and the receipt just has the cracking, yeah. but it's like 65 digits long yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. and numbers and the customer. Yeah. Comes it. So I have to like go home oh, yeah. and do, like one X. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like that, that was like, Soul sucking for me, man. Now, now, now you did that. You listen. You helped me figure out what I don't like doing. I like the packaging of it. I like uh, organizing it and crossing it. Like all my cards, as a side note, they all have different borders. So each year I change the border on them. Okay, the down the bottom. And so, so basically, each card I draw will be a one of one. It'll have a serial number on the back. At the end of the year, I'll have a checklist of every card I've drawn in that particular card style. Like I use, you know, I have platinums, I have stadiums, I have the premiums. Okay, so each card will be registered with its own serial number, and there'll be a checklist. So if someone ever, I post them at the end of the year on my on all my social media stuff. If people want to go back and say, "Hey, I want the Ronald Acuna uh, card," who, where who had it? So maybe they will, maybe they can figure out a way to get it out of that guy's pride out of that guy's hands, right? Yep. Um, so then each year I'll change my card border, and so my my long play is hopefully in three years that someone will have to go back and find uh, a card from my inauguration set. I got to have the Ronald Acuna from the inauguration set. You know, I'm no longer doing those. So then that, that'll add. Uh, I hope to add value to my collectors in that way, right? Yeah, um, that's great, and that but, sounds like a lot of work. Yes, it does. But I like tracking all of it. You know, I like doing all that part of it. But I still handwrite all the addresses. I don't even type them out still. Wow. So I got to track down all the addresses when someone um, sends me the order, right? Because one time the ser- the PayPal service gave me the wrong address. I mailed one of my favorite cards I've ever done, and it got lost in the mail. Um, it's a Randy Moss double platinum. It is one of my favorite cards I've ever done and it's gone in space somewhere out there. I don't know where it is. No. So, so I, I had to, I always now for my customers, I always make sure I double check the address, make sure I don't go by the invoice that I was given. So I, I, I do need, I have been looking and you helped me with this, a, a place to do that at obviously my oldest son is, not doing anything this summer so he goes and makes my post office runs for me which is helpful you know um, but i also go to a very i live in missouri i go to a very small post office for that reason and there's usually never anyone in there i go to that one for that reason so it's you i'm usually in pretty pretty good in and out but uh, yeah that's that's the one thing i don't and i hate tracking numbers now like you said you get that long list you then got to go find the person on there and nothing against any of my collectors or customers. And I get you're a- anxious and excited, but I tell you when you, co- when you reach out to me, I always respond right away, you know, so they don't have any fear. And I t- I'm always, I'm always transparent and honest. Even if it's bad news, like I told, you know, I'm booked to March. That's bad news for people, but, it, but it's honest. I don't want to lie to them, you know? Um, but I hate, I mailed it yesterday. It's not going to be there today, you know, especially now in the time we live in. Yep. Just can you just give it a couple of days, and if it's lot, if it's not there in a week, I'll track it down for you. But I don't really see the, you know, for me, you know, I, I don't like typing in the number, you know, like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel that. Um, yeah. The other one that was really, and I know I mentioned this on on Lauren's stream too. I mentioned it with F dot as well, but. Um, the shipping is annoying, and that that part has been I've I've kind of got that out and a little bit more. It's still it's still a work. Um, yeah, anyway. especially especially the quantities you guys are pumping out, man. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, and we have. I mean, honestly, I I know that Tops has been frustrating to a lot of people with you know people are complaining about some quality control stuff in terms of stickers being crooked or. I saw today someone got a Jeter SIF card where the card was upside down in the case. And I, I was like, oh, I got 10 of them. I'll trade you for that in a heartbeat. I think it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, people are like, oh, my God, how can you how can you have a card upside down in a case? Well, I can tell you, man, we're doing a, only a small fraction of the volume that Topps is doing. Yes. And, and we are trying our best. And, like, I, I try to look at everything or see everything. We've got, like, the team is very meticulous. We sent the wrong – we've sent the wrong COA – with the yeah. wrong card to people we've yeah. sent people, we've swapped two shipments and sent two yeah. different people the wrong thing like yeah. we sent someone to order one card we sent them like eight cards 
autograph yeah. expensive cards and Ooh. they said oh, i think this is wrong you know we'd swap two shipments um you know and it's just it's uh growing pains and it's learning it you know it's learning but it's also like you know once you do a certain amount of volume it's it's hard to get everything absolutely perfect so so how much time do you guys spend shipping stuff out i mean on a week you do it all every day I'm shipping every day yeah you do and especially especially when we have otters in hand uh so like our trout the trout card should come Oh, today's Friday. So early next, early to mid next week, I would anticipate. I haven't gotten my shipping notification from Tops yet. I know that a lot of people did, but I did pay for overnight shipping. So uh, it's kind of annoying that they're shipping everyone else's smart post first, and then they ship my overnight like last, and then we just do them the same day. Right, right. You had to pay extra for the overnight. I paid. Yes, I paid a lot extra because I ordered a thousand yeah. parts. Oh so boy, yeah, like four hundred dollars for shipping. Jeez. Uh, anyways, smart post next time, I guess. Uh, anyways, like. Once we get those cards in, processing those, uh, autographing the ones that we need to, and getting those out the door, because we sold a lot of them on pre-order, uh -huh. spend probably three, four days straight, uh, almost the entire team doing nothing but like prepping, uh, doing the whole uh -huh. autograph sequence, and then prepping uh -huh. the shipments and then shipping them out. Uh, now, right now, we're kind of in this like calm before the storm. Uh -huh. Even so, I mean, we went and shipped. 10, 20 packages today in that box you had? Okay, like 10, 30, yesterday. 30 things yesterday, 10 Golly. things today. Um, and that's mostly people that are sending me in cards for autographs, yes. uh, Beckett's to autograph, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily purchases, it's literally just yeah. free stuff that we're doing. Um, you're but, not complaining, it's just time for I'm not complaining, it's just, it's constant, it's a constant yeah. thing. And I've been like, at first, we kind of let them like pile up for a little while. And so some people that sent in stuff for autographs had to wait a long time at the beginning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I was thinking like, okay, well, it's smarter if we batch this. We could just knock it out once a month and then yeah. switch it out. But people end up waiting a long time. And I understand the value of like, you know, reputation online. If people send in a yes. card and then they're like, yo, I, I sent in my car, Blake, Blake's card like a month ago and I haven't gotten it back yet. It's a lot different. Um helping to build my brand then if someone's yes. like sent the card in it got flipped around and sent right back like that's yeah. that's cool so now we're doing a little bit of shipping every single day and then mail monday so we like collect mail from fans that send that type of stuff in uh, open the, that all on monday and then as soon as we and then we just start the week and we just try and crank everything out so God, I got that, you know, like, before mail monday's episode i want everything out of the studio from the previous week um, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it just starts piling up on you. Yeah, I, we, do. I mean, we have piles. We have we have piles. I'm much I'm much smaller, as you know, and I used to go to the post office a couple times a week because I I felt I felt bad that they were long, they were done and they were in my house, but at some point I'm already behind. All that does is put me further behind, you know. So I I've just come to the conclusion it's just I I hate to be mean, but. If you want your, in some ways, you're getting your card faster if you just let me go to the post office once a week, you know, yeah. because it, it does, it takes me, so I, I scan all, so when I complete a card, I scan it, I save each one in my computer, so I have a copy of it. Um, I'm not going to do prints, but I save each one, you know, it's my only record of the of the artwork. Yeah. So I scan and save, yeah. and then I got all my case, I put little stickers on my cases, I put stickers on my envelopes. Um, I got, I got to do all that. I don't put COAs in my one of ones, although I'm starting to contemplate doing it. Mm -hmm. I do. And all my prints, they all come with COAs. All those do. Nice. Um, but, but I haven't done it with my cards, but I think well, it's I probably, hard to replicate your, like the one of one art card. Like it would be, it would take some serious talent to read to someone else to make a fake of that. Versus, well, then, yeah, you know, I think you're to forge, right? Yeah, you're correct. Right now. Now I will say this. I, now that I think about it, I do have COAs on the back of my cards. They do come with, with um, you just have to see them. So I really, now that I think about it, I do have those. They're on the back of my card. So, so yeah, I, I, uh, I spend, it takes me about three to four hours every Saturday or Friday, whichever day I do it, to get it all done and get it all. And then my cards, I, they're not, I draw them, but on the backs, I still have like a, you can still see some of the um, uh, illustration board logo on it. Okay. I use cans. Yeah. I don't want that on the back of my car. Right. So I have to go and I have to adhere uh, white 
uh, card stock to the back to cover that up. Mm. And then I got to put my, uh, basically my COA on the back of my card. So that all that takes about three to four hours every weekend just to do that, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. But that's right. something I could, that's something I could hand off, but I use, I use a lot of stickers as they're not on straight. That bothers me, you know, um, because each card, that's the only one they get. You know what I mean? So each one, you know, this has to be special for each person, Of course. you know? So like you said, all my entire business is through word of mouth. Okay, that's it. I don't, I don't know how to advertise. I don't know how to – all the people – I live in Missouri, and I bet you 99% of my business is out of state, you know. So I believe it's important that all my stuff looks right when it leaves. It's very important to me. I don't want the stickers on crooked. I don't want the packaging written in crappy handwriting. You know, I don't want any of that. So it's all part of it. But, yes, that's something I could probably hand off if I could find somebody I could trust to hand it off to. That's the problem. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, that's that's absolutely true. Um, yeah, and as far as trust, actually, that ties into the thing I was going to mention of the other position outside of the shipping. Um, my sister and actually my dad, and my dad had a question or a comment about tops I want to address in a second. Um, so I hired my sister to handle my inboxes, uh-huh. uh, Facebook, email, uh-huh. call forums, like every inbox across the internet, and Granted, I also, I get ex, like exponentially more flooded with random messages than I used to before Project 2020. It wasn't the type of hire that, like before Project 2020, that wouldn't have been the most important hire I could make in my business. With where Project 2020 has taken me, where like everyone like, yeah. everyone's got something to say and I yeah. love it and I have, yeah, right. like, right. I, am, I am so grateful, but it was, it became... I'm a pretty relaxed, chill dude, and I don't really get anxious about a lot of stuff. Sometimes, uh-huh. you, know, I, you know, Matt would tell you or Tony or whatever, I don't know, I can think of maybe half a dozen days in the Project 2020 where they come and get me and I'm all flustered. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, I, uh, I can't, right? And that happens, you know, to everyone. Yeah. Sure. But like, I don't think it's happened more than a half a dozen times in sure. four, four months. Man, my inbox, I just could never get it down to zero. And that became a very like point of uh, anxiety for me. Yes, yeah. As soon as I hired my sister Tess, and she started taking that off my plate, and we got it dialed in. We have like a great system now. I'm just like, oh, it's so nice when it when an important email comes in, she could shoot me a text, say yes, oh, yeah. message, um, the Beckett thing, right? You were the one yeah. that got the Beckett uh, yeah. sports directory. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So they had sent a message uh, about the same time that you told me about it. Uh-huh. And I. I mean, I don't, I don't even check right. it anymore. Right, right, right. right. I think, you know, I think this one's important, um, and so it's great. So, like, that's like that, and shipping are just so cool. So that I can try and spend as much as I yeah. can making the art, which is really cool. And then, Dad, I saw you comment um, uh, talking about get, catching up. They've gone from one to two months behind. I assume, and I don't know. I didn't go all the way up. You're talking about top. Yes, they did go from one to two months behind. And I think about it like this. Every single day, two cards come out. I've ordered every single card, and I do not get two cards a day. So they're yeah. falling further and farther behind as of now. Yes. However. And I am i don't know if you saw the post that I made on Facebook, Dad, but uh, and on Twitter, but Tops has 500,000 cases coming next week. Mm. Another 500,000 coming the third week of August. Right now, the biggest... Uh, uh, bottleneck is cases themselves. Mm-hmm. So they've actually printed up through a card 151. They're only shipping card number 100 because they just don't have enough cases. And card number 100, 100 is my Mike Trout that did a big print run. And so that's causing you to do. So it's partially my fault, Dad. Uh, but next week, uh, they're going to have a ton of cases. That's, I think 500K cases gets them through like card number 130. If you look at all the print runs combined. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this though. There's no way they knew it was going to be as big as they it turned out to be, right? That is correct. Right. Which I will say this, it's a tribute to all you artists to how well you did. And I'm sure it's like anything else. The more you guys saw each other's stuff, the better each other's stuff got, you know, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. 
And um, the one thing that surprised and two things that have surprised me since I've been doing artwork, number one is the card collectors are unbelievable people. I mean, I haven't encountered a bad one yet in two years. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, they'll take your stuff. As you saw the day, all the just stuff about them tweeting, not me, them tweeting, I'm going to be on, you know, and you, you are much bigger following than I do. Okay. Um, that's number one. And then the other thing I found that's been amazing is all how great the artists have all been. I haven't encountered a bad one of those yet. You know, I was fortunate enough to be in Beckett with some great artists and their artist spotlight, you know, a dream come true for me to be in that magazine and every one of those dudes. And I'm the same. We follow each other's stuff. And, and just like you guys are doing on tops 2020, it is absolutely amazing, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. F. Dot, F. Dot, I don't know if that's what you want to go by or your name on here, but F. Dot, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah. uh, anyway, it's amazing how great all the artists have been, man. It's unbelievable to me, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But but you but I don't I, I gotta believe Tops is, is flabbergasted how well it's went. I mean, that's why they don't have the cases. That's why they're behind on stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't think they had any idea they were gonna have to print the amount of cards they were gonna have to do. I mean. <laughs> I certainly didn't. <laughs> I don't think I don't think anyone is ready for it. And it's kind of the perfect storm with everyone being stuck at home. There's a lot of people like yeah, that, that grew up collecting baseball cards, fell out of the hobby for two decades for me. Yeah. And this project brought me back in. And I think this project has brought a lot of people back into the hobby. And if you're sitting at home, you're stuck at home and you don't have anything to do, and then you realize, holy crap. I have boxes of baseball cards in my garage that I haven't touched in 20 years. How exciting is that to go look through it? Like that is awesome. And I've heard that story from a lot of people. And so then I think that like that hype was, was unexpected. The fact that no sports. So everyone's looking to fill a void and, you know, have something that's sports related. Yeah. So for, for a long time, when, when all other sports were canceled, you know, there was no tops. Now there was no, there was no sports to watch. So yeah. like 2020 was still just a consistent thing where, People were getting that sport, the nostalgia. Yeah, exactly, Eric. Um, well, let, let, let me ask, let me ask F Dot a question if he can respond on here. Yeah, I'm not familiar with how much of a sports fan he's been his whole life. Did he anticipate this would be this big of a deal for him? That's the question I have for him. That's good. Well, he'll answer it when he gets a chance. I'm sure, but he will. I know. I feel like I could answer it for him, but I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And while you answer that question, let me know. Were you a big sports fan? Were you a baseball card guy himself? Do you know that? Yeah. Blake, do you know if he was? Uh, he was a Peter fan. Yankee. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a good one to pick. Yeah. 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 He said, no, I totally underestimated it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, that he has a closet full of one touches and toilet paper. <laughs> prepared for the apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy, man. Even, you know, you think about that with COVID, like, I mean, there were fights over toilet paper. Oh, yeah, before, yeah. Right? And, wow. and that's, that's, that's like, you got to have toilet paper. One yes. test is like, we can all agree, this is a luxury good. These yes. These cards are luxury good. And yes. People are, people are whining about it a lot. And there were people that couldn't wipe the butts not that long no. ago. It's funny you bring that up. How scared were you? You're, you're in the start of this big project. You have no idea where it's going at this point, I'm assuming. And then COVID hits. And you're in the epicenter of New York. So it hit you guys hard. And and they hailed it, uh, you know, much differently than, than out where I am. Okay. Yep. So how scared were you that here you are, you're finally getting to, you know, I won't say, for lack of a better term, you got a big project that's about to explode for you, and then all of a sudden it looks like the world could shut it down on you. I mean, I mean, it had to be uh, terrifying for you. It was, um, it was scary, especially when the start, the actual start date of Project Twenty Twenty. There was supposed to be a press event. It was happening local at the New, at the New York like headquarters of Tops. Okay, to kick off the event. And I was so excited about that. I was so grateful for this project. So we have we have a pretty sweet deal. We get royalties on the cards. So when the cards do better, we make more money. Sure. But one of the things that I negotiated, and I think a lot of the artists did as well, is I negotiated in advance against future royalties. Uh -huh. They said, look, if I have to go paint all these cards, I have to pay my studio rent. I have to buy supplies. 
uh, uh -huh. all these things. And because I'm buying these for the tops project, I can't go work out in these other commissions. Like I don't have, I'm not going to have much other income. So like, and this was pre COVID that this all that got negotiated. And so I had not a huge um, advance, but I had an advance and I don't know. I don't remember if I had actually gotten it when the, when the event got postponed, but we already had the end contract. So I knew that at, at minimum, I had a minimum guarantee. And so uh -huh. within the contract, if for whatever reason, my royalties didn't exceed my advance, I would get mm -hmm. to keep my advance and I would not owe them any money back. Okay. Right. As long as I produce the work. That's a pretty good deal. Right. And so that was like a security blanket for me saying, okay, when the advance came in two different payments, they were, they were almost back to back, but I had gotten a payment. And so I knew that I could like pay my studio rent, pay my rent and survive. And I knew that I had one more of those coming yeah. in like two weeks later. Right. Uh, and so because of that, I was never really that worried of like the project is going to be a complete wash because I had gotten money and yeah. to pay my rent. Uh, then the event, the launch event was at first postponed and then it was canceled. And that was disappointing because that was supposed to be like, they were going to do a press event and the first card was going to drop the next day. And then they postponed it like two weeks, I think. Uh -huh. And then, <laughs> And then so they're like, we're pushing back the set two weeks. Yeah. And then, and then they said, okay, actually, we're canceling the press event. We can't oh, we're shit. Gathering. And so I was like, well, what is this going to mean for the set? And they're yeah. like, okay, we're still going to launch the set. We're going to push that back a couple weeks too. So, like, so we had this, uh, this kind of back and forth. And like, I was also under a stri pretty strict NDA where I couldn't talk to anyone or tell anyone oh, about it right. until they were launched it with their press release. And then it was open season. And so I think there was a window of time where I thought that this project was already going to be long. I wasn't allowed to talk about it. It kept getting pushed back. Fortunately, I had my advance. So like I was going to be okay, but I also like, I mean, it wasn't enough to get me through the year. It was enough to get me through like a month or two. Um, yeah. So that was like, that was like the scariest part when I was like, Oh crap. What if the, what if the set doesn't happen? And then the advance is all I get. And then I have to like go back to the drawing board of how I'm going to like, you know, run my business for the rest of the year. Yeah. So that was the only scary part. Once, once this, once the ball started rolling, and really once my first card crate came out, and then after it ended, I was like really impressed with the print run. And yeah, obviously, um, you know, the print run started now in in all, yeah. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. like sure they were low, but yeah. they were much higher than I even expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because you like, were, your expectations were lower than than even that, right? Yeah, I sold like you know twenty six hundred uh, Nolan Ryan's, and I was like, "Wow, this is huge. Yeah, let's and go!" Was like, I was very excited, and literally, it was like it's never. It's been like a rocket ship, yeah. despite right. secondary market prices going taking their yes. value. Like my business in, in general, and my my mentality and like my excitement has been a rocket ship. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, my my is different. So, I quit my job, and uh, I get my first full year in right. I'm on my second year, I'm um, two or three months out of the time. I feel pretty good about stuff. And then I'll, I'll never forget, I was a big, I'm a big NBA fan, right? I definitely was, you know, at the time. I'm watching that game on Friday night when they, when the Jazz, you know, come down with coronavirus. And then they said, we're going to, we're not going to, the Lakers didn't play. I think it was the Lakers or the, or the, no, the Pelicans, they didn't play that night. And I looked at my wife, I'm like, oh shit, you know. Uh, the world's going to shut down. I just knew then it's going to shut down, and I, I have all I have all these commissions, but people are going to not go to. They're not going to be going. I just knew they were going to work and everything, right? And I can't. I don't have three months worth of of money stored up. You know, I'm I'm counting on this work that I have in the books. So I remember I reached out to everybody I had a card with to see if I could collect the whole thing. You know. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be able to, and I, I think I collected on 90% of those cards, which then I knew I would get through June, I think. Mm -hmm. And the next day, that was on a Saturday. The next day, Sunday, I went out and bought excess of art supplies I could find. I'm like, I got to get plenty of extra board, plenty of extra markers, mm -hmm. plenty of extra pencils. And a side note, I use Prismacolor pencils. They're not being made right now. I can't find them anywhere. That's the truth. So... I've been going to different Michaels and all and buying one or two at a time. Now I have a nice store of them, you know, but I'm nervous that if they don't get printing soon, I'm eventually going to run out of them, you know. Um, but but I at the time I remember going out and buying 
basically, for a lack of a better term, supplying up if you can, yeah. so I can make it through that time. You know, that, that was scary for me. Now I will tell you this: I did learn this, which I'm very grateful for. My cards made it through that. I, I had a two week lull when it was first shut down, that everybody was nervous about what was going to happen. And then once it became obvious that, that, that people were going to slowly go back to work, my business has picked up and hasn't never left off. So, you know, I always wanted to gravitate towards bigger things because as a kid, that's what I wanted. That's what I dreamed of doing stuff like you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, that those cards are my bread and butter. I'm never leaving them, you know, and I'm, instead, instead of trying to gravitate towards away from them, I'm going to gravitate more towards them, if that makes sense to you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's unexpected, I think, for both of us that, this, the world shutting down and sports stopping, I think, has actually helped our businesses. Yeah, maybe. I never looked at it that way, you know, but I, I can't argue with your premise. That's for sure. Yeah, I think. Um, and it's uh, and I've talked about this before. Of like, you know, I've I've dealt with a little bit of guilt over that because I know that a lot of people are struggling and, you know, my business has never been uh, as uh booming as it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's tough, but, uh, you know, the best that I can do is the best that I can do and try and give back and support other people and lift everyone up and deliver yeah. a little bit of joy in the form of art. So so that's been cool. But I, I do think, and it was one of many unexpected things in the project is that, like, the timing of the project and where we're at as uh, the world is actually worked in, I think, my business's favor and I, I would imagine the yeah. same thing for you like people are missing sports and uh yeah. there's not a lot going on and like having having some little little tiny three and a half by four and a half inch piece of joy is uh sometimes you know enough to make someone really happy um which is great yeah i i can't uh, i can't dispute that that's for sure um and i will say this i for many years i collected comic books man and when you get to collecting something all these people know this, man. It, it gets in you. You can't. <laughs> and then you get one, and you're like, man, that's that's even better than I thought it would be. You gotta have another one, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's awesome, man. And like I said, like seeing your that Don Manningly in person is awesome. And man, it's crazy hearing that story about uh, how Truth Seekers uh, got yeah. you, and and just to pay it forward, like you know, it's it's so humbling and so cool. It is. It's, 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 it's wonderful. Like my wife told me, you know, you've been really good to me, you know, and she's like, Hey, before she told me this last night, she's like, look, before you go on, you need to remember how well, how well he's treated you and what he's done for you, you know, and you need to pay that for us and miss you. Believe me, I, I try to do that now, you know, yeah. I, I just don't have the platform. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's great, man. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think, uh, like I said, I mean, I think that you're incredibly talented. Um, and, and another like unexpected, I think, benefit of Top 2020 Project is that how many artists it has introduced me to and how many relationships have been built, um, both with artists and also yeah. with collectors and fans and, sure. and stuff. But like the artist thing is so much fun. And like, you know, talking to Lauren Taylor recently, yeah. obviously, you know, F. Dot, uh, who's here on the stream, Gregory yeah. Six, JK5 uh, last week too, like it just, I didn't ever think I didn't ever think about that um, and how that might evolve, and it yeah. totally came out of nowhere. And as soon as I saw that opportunity, just like anytime I see an opportunity, I'm like, oh, okay, let's run with that. So yeah. now, doing these Friday things, so cool. Yeah. Um, well, my my daughter said it. My daughter said it best to me today. How hard is it to be nice? You know. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not hard to be nice to people. You know. So. Yeah. It, it sure doesn't hurt you. You know. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So awesome, man. No. Well, shoot, we are uh, gone almost two hours. Um, let's see. Let's do uh, let's do a couple more random questions outside of the uh, art world. All right, but before you go any further, go ahead. I'm new to this, so I, I'm trying to read the scroll, and I'm only getting like one out of five on the right. So I just want to tell the people that have questions for me, I'm sorry I missed them. Can yeah. you please just send me an, uh, an IM or a DM, whatever social media you, you follow me on, and I will gladly answer every question you've asked me on here. Yeah. I just can't follow along, and I don't even know how to answer them when I see them. So to be honest <laughs> with you. So, no worries. Forgive my ignorance. <laughs> Honestly, Matt's been Matt's been um, 
watching him. He, every once in a while, he slips me a little paper with some. Yeah. And uh, you know, especially the ones that are asked more than once. Well, like like F dot popped on here. I don't. I F dot. I have no. Uh, I do not mean to disrespect you in any way. I'm just. I'm. I'm overwhelmed with everything that's going on on the screen in front of me. <laughs> so I apologize for you know any, any necessary, man. anything I might have done to offend somebody. I did not mean to do it. I, I'm just a, a dude living in Missouri who's struggling with all this stuff. So anyway, go ahead. Hit me with those questions. All right, I'm trying to. I, I mean, I don't. I don't have. I'm just gonna make. Okay. It all right. All right. Um, I, I got one for you. How, okay. Sure. Let's do that. Why you think? Of, why you think of, of yeah. mine? Yeah. So I'm watching you do the Hank Aaron thing, right? Yep. Okay. And I don't want to give away any of your art secrets. So if you want to not talk about it, you can just politely move on, and I won't ask you a question. Fully transparent, man. I got okay. no So that Hank Aaron film that you printed out, that you cut the stencil out of, did you print it out with printer? Yes. Okay, that's got to be a large format printer, I'm assuming, correct? So it's uh, uh, HP Desk Design Jet T120. So it's is it is it on a spool? Yeah, it's on a spool, 24 inches wide. Okay, okay. So you got 24 wide as long as you want to go. Exactly. And I've pushed. Okay. That. I've done. So I did like I did a huge Muhammad Ali painting that's like it turned out to be I think six feet by eight feet, but I printed out eight feet long and then I went up like, you know, and then I did another eight feet long and then I kind of splice them. Yeah. Splice them splice them together. Yeah. That was my next question. If you splice that together, if it came out in one sheet, I usually don't um, splice, but uh, sometimes I will. Yeah. Yeah. You prefer not to because for all that I have to splice from time to time on some stuff I do. And for, and especially in screen printing, it's not fun to do. Yeah. Um, so I was curious if you did that. Cause that would, that would, that would be tough, especially with the paint. Cause it would, I would think it would, seep through some of those cracks from time to time on you, you know? So then my next question for you was, and I watched your process, what kind of film is that? It, uh, is it like, like vellum, for example? Oh, like what I'm printing out on? Yeah. Paper, just regular yeah. paper. Is that right? Yeah. And the paper holds up to the, to the paint? Yes, so I use uh, paper, use a spray adhesive, glue it to uh -huh. a rubber, rubber mat. Uh-huh cut it all out, uh -huh. and take this stuff called fiber tape, which is like a construction mesh. Uh, that's the mesh that I see, that, that's the mesh pattern I see, okay. Put that mesh down and that's sticky on one side. So I, paper on top of there, mesh, bam, and then I peel both of them up together. Uh huh. The mesh is really what makes it like strong. Okay, right? yeah, I, I figured that's why yeah. you use the mesh for that part of it, right? I use two parts, one to make it more resilient and number two to hold in all the islands. So like, Oh the yes. The part that I've cut out that if I just peeled up the paper, like it wouldn't be attached to anything. So it would just yes. so so it, everything just in place. Almost like giant screens for screen printing is basically what it is. Exactly yeah. like that. Exactly. Yeah, and you get the added benefit of that extra texture of yep. the mesh, which works out really well for you. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I, I was curious as how all, how all that process works. Now, my next question for you is, I know you use the, I know you use the mask for the spray paint. Okay. I, I uh, did this Vladimir Tarasenko piece in my house and I tried it. This is back when I, I didn't understand. I, I have a small birth of backgrounds. So I used spray paint to do the background. I thought it'd be a cool way to do it. I could maybe, you know, but how I am, I ended up blending it all together and it didn't work out quite as well. But that freaking drawing stunk from that spray paint for literally weeks while I worked on it. Does yours, yours have to smell like that, right? They probably do. You're, you've gotten used to it. I'm sure I've gotten used to it. Also, I mean, we have a very large industrial exhaust fan. Uh huh, uh huh. And only on, and more recently, I bought a floor kind of a, it's like a, almost on a dolly. It's like another, just a big industrial fan. So I'm I'm like piping air through my wow. studio, very at a very high, whatever it is, square feet per minute. Yeah. You know, whatever whatever metric they use for that, we're moving the air. See, uh -huh. I think it is cubic foot per minute. We're moving uh -huh. it very fast, which helps. Mm -hmm. uh, and after I paint something, like I'll leave the studio to go eat lunch or yeah. to go into one of the other rooms or whatever, and we'll cr keep the fans cranking to, yeah. to put out. And then at nights, I have an air purifier, um, and I don't run it every night, just when I remember. So really, just probably one or two times a week. But I'll put that on turbo and run it all night. Um, 
I don't know, make me feel better about cleaning the air. Uh, but yeah, I mean, outside of that, like, I don't know. I don't, I can smell spray paint, but I can't like take a painting that I painted yesterday. And if I smell it, I don't think it smells like spray paint. Okay. I mean, see, my, 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 my because, well, now, I will say this though. I use model paint now that I think about it. Cause I didn't want to buy the big spray, the spray cans, you know, I know I didn't need that much. So I use them and that stuff, man. Good Lord. I mean, for weeks, I can use a model paint and you're putting it into the hopper and you're using like an airbrush. No, I just sprayed it right out of the can. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, cause yeah. I, I'm not, I don't have all the, I yeah. was just, I tried, you know, so I think that the model paint is oil based. Uh huh. The paint that I use is actually, it's like an acrylic spray paint. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. And so I think that that's probably less. But sometimes I will buy like, like uh, when the paint stores were closed because of COVID and I really needed yellow paint, I went to Home Depot and I mm -hmm. got some just like off the shelf, like uh, which is oil based. Yes. That stuff smells way worse than the paint. That yeah. I that, that's, that's probably what, that's probably what, that's probably what it is. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right, I got a question. So I know you said you have a 21 year old daughter. She gives you that mm -hmm. honest feedback. Your mm -hmm. youngest son, you went and watched play baseball. Mm -hmm. so you're more, more than two. I have three kids. So I have a 21 year old girl. Yep. I have a 17 year old boy and a 15 year old boy. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm living, a, I'm living a dream here. <laughs> are they, um, are they, are like creatively inclined? Uh, you know, not really, not really. You know, I, I, I hate to admit this to people. But I, the people that know me and on this feed that know me personally know this already. I was that sports dad that you don't want to, you know, that everybody's embarrassed to know. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, now I will say this. I've, I've coached all my kids play sports. None of them are really uh, artistic and kind. My daughter has a good eye for it, you know. Yes. And, and, my, and, of course, my kids are – they draw fairly well. Two of them do for sure. But they're not they're not what I would consider buddy and artist, nor they have interest to be, you know. My daughter has a good eye for it, though. She can see stuff that looks good. And, what, and she's generally been right, at least in my opinion, okay? Sure. But, sure. but most of my life, I was the – I was the day – like, I coached almost all my kids. And I always said this jokingly. But I'm more, one of the reasons I did is so I could yell at them anytime I wanted. <laughs> you know, it looks bad if you're yelling from the stands. But if you're in the dugout, you're coaching. <laughs> So, <laughs> all right. All right. knows me knows that about me so yeah and uh, uh, what sports do they play they were all I liked basketball and baseball so they played basketball and softball or baseball <laughs> if you're a you know, the boy yeah. you know so I, I always make a joke that uh, that I could have deprived the world of the world's greatest soccer player or hockey player we'll never know because I forced him to play basketball and baseball or softball you know in her yeah. case so yeah. And so, so now with everything that's going on, um, is it like home, are you guys homeschooling? No, he see we live in Missouri, so it's you know look, I I definitely don't want to get in a political debate. I'm sure you don't either. Um, and I will say this: I think whatever side of the fence you're on, I can respect it because I can see both sides of it clearly. Okay, but just where I live, I live out. I don't live in St. Louis. I live in a suburb right outside of St. Louis. I live in the St. Peter's area. Okay. And we are in what we call St. Charles County. St. Louis County is currently on lockdown, you know, mass and schools aren't schools are homeschooling. I believe the first couple of weeks, yeah. um, our school, they sent out a flyer. You can, you can basically decide, you know, you, you send it back to the superintendent and they kind of basically voted. So there's three options for the students in my area to go back to. So, that being said, I have a because I coach forever. I know a lot of coaches. I know a lot of AD athletic directors and stuff like that. So I've I've been kind of on the inside, knowing how things were going to be. And uh, you know, it's just crazy. It, it, it's it's uncertain, crazy times. I tell people this is the last. I'll talk about it because I don't want to get into it. But I I wish two hundred years from now I could go back and read the history books on what they say happened during this time. You know, good or bad. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. So anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, for most of my life, I I worked at a t-shirt shop. I, I This is embarrassing to say, but I played a lot of slow pitch softball over the years. I traveled all around the country doing it. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, man. It's great to get outside and run around. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, again, it's like a cult, man. You get caught up in something and you just don't really, you know, you can't. You, you, anyway, I don't want to touch on it. But then I moved right into coaching and – uh you know, I will say this, and you work with some kids I know, you know, I remember when people said, hey, you, you know, 
Kenny, you're going to be a coach because you won't trust anyone else to do it with your kids and stuff. I said, I, have no, I used to tell them I have no desire to coach, but they were right. I didn't trust anybody else once I got started. And yeah. I will tell you this. I was fortunate. My first kid was a girl. She was a great athlete. So I was able to coach her basketball and softball. And I met some fantastic families. And those – this will, I don't want this to sound creepy, but those girls are some of the – they're like family members to me, you know, in both sports. I think the world of those kids – and, and and looking back in life, some of my best moments were those conversations with those kids, man. Stuff you get to say to them, and uh, you, uh, you know, life lessons. I used to always tell them, "I'm not here for the the skill training. That's what that other coach is for. I'm here for the life lessons. I'm here to help you for future stuff." You know. Um, so and, I, and I, to elaborate, when I started this. Like you, I'm sure I was working a full time job and I was staying up at nights till two in the morning. I was fueled by monster energy drinks. That's the only way I could make it through. I don't like coffee. And so I would go come home, I would do my kids' stuff, I'd do my work, and then I would everybody go to bed at around ten o'clock and I'd stay up till two thirty as much as I could have done. Wake yeah, up the next day, start all over. I'm sure you've been there, you know. And I did that for months and my if I mean, every night and my, you know, I remember wife saying, you, you, you can't continue to do this. It's not healthy. You know, it's not healthy. And I'm like, you're right. But I can tell you this, and this is, I mean, with all sincerity, I used to sit down with those girls and those boys that I've coached and they would all come to me, coach, coach can, you know, what do you think about this? Or I think the coach is unfair. I don't think I'm getting a fair shake here. Or, I'm not getting this right. You know, you're not using me right here. And I always tell them the same thing. Look, Anything you want in life bad enough that you're willing to invest your heart and soul in, you can have. But there's a price that you have to be willing to pay for it. If you're not willing to pay that price, you're probably not going to get the payday you expect at the end. The question I always ask those girls is this. Are you willing to pay that price? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Everybody can pay it for a couple days, a couple weeks. Can you do it long term? You know? Life lessons to Ken. Coach Ken. I I I love it. To finish, many nights I was down here feeling sorry for myself. My stuff isn't getting exposed. All these other artists are doing well. I'm not. And many nights I wanted to quit. And I can remember saying to myself, man, you looked all those kids in the eye and said, God, how bad right. do you want something? Are you willing to pay the price? And I just thought to myself, man, you, you'd be a giant hypocrite if you walked away not willing to pay the price, you know. So right. anyway, those kids helped shape me as much as I ever did them. So anyway. I love that, man. I did. Um, so I played lacrosse in college and then I did some coaching. I did a uh, youth team and then I was an assistant coach of a varsity high school team. And I think you're spot on. You learn just as much from the kids as they oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I, I tell people all the time, man, this generation of kids gets a bad rap, you know, that they don't go outside. And I always tell people, look, they don't go outside because we won't as parents let them go outside, you know. I rode the bike to the park. I won't let my kids ride the bike to the park. You know, it's not their fault. They play online video games because that's the only way they can connect with their friends. Mm -hmm. And they, they're lazy. No, they're not, man. These kids will do anything you ask them to do. The difference between this generation and ours, if a coach or a parent told you to do something, you did it. You didn't question it. Mm -hmm. But we as parents have raised our kids to question everything any adult says to them. OK, so these kids, this generation, you've got to convince them it's in their best interest to do it. If you can do that, they will do anything for you or for themselves, for sure. Yeah. So, I don't know, all yeah. those kids I coach, they know that about me. And, and, and I, you know, I think the world of all those kids. So anyway. Awesome. So question your kids, they played basketball, uh -huh. baseball, softball. You uh -huh. ever give one of one cards to them? Yeah, I have. You know, it, it, it's a funny story. So my original golden opportunity art project was i used to draw people's kids playing sports okay because yeah. i like the movement of uh i hate portrait drawing i'm sure i mean i like it in the cars but not like family portraits i'm sure i hate that okay so i thought man if i could get now people got good cameras you get a good action shot and i draw people's kids playing sports and i thought man this is a golden opportunity because who wouldn't want that right yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a, I always tell people that's something you'll have the rest of your life. It'll hang on your walk. You said earlier, a thousand dollar piece, you're putting it out on the mantle. You draw a piece of art of someone's kid. It's out on the mantle the rest of their life. Dude, everyone's kid that you've ever drawn. I hope that they still have those cards. Cause that's, that is going to be worth. That's gonna be <laughs> well, awesome. anyway, they were, they were bigger. So then I, so then like when my, all the kids I that graduated that I coached, I drew them all little cards of themselves. Right. Yeah. My daughter always says she always gives me crap about it. She's like, Dad, I remember that was like five years ago. 
she's like, or four years ago. She's like, Dad, I remember when you drew those cards. I thought they were awesome. You know, all the girls loved them. You know, she says, I look back on now compared to what you're doing now, and they're embarrassingly bad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're right. She's honest. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I I did. That's great that she like has that perspective, and I think that like she's at a spot now where like. She'll do whatever she's going to go do at the age of 21. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like said, and, then, and then in five years, she's going to look back at what she did and be like, oh, man, that was silly, you know. Yes, yeah, for, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was my golden, that was my golden ticket. I thought, man, I was surprised at how few people took me up on that, so. Yeah, me too. I mean, yeah, that's that's really cool, though. I love, I love that you tied that all in and tied in the coaching stuff and – you know, the kids and still the sports stuff is just, yeah. Great. It's great, man. So it, uh, anytime, anytime you want to wrap up, my man, you can wrap up. I, you know, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm trying to think like, I've, I've got you. I feel like we're, we're killing it and people are liking it. Even if people are, you know, going to bed, I just feel like um, there's more that I want to know. So cu- I got a couple more. Okay. I'll go as long as you want, just so you know, like absolute, Ideal world, and I'm not like really like a five or ten year goal kind of guy. I like to think more short term. So like a year from now, what uh, where do you see yourself in 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 an ideal world? Now, don't worry about being realistic. Just be mm-hmm. like if I could if I could have anything in the world, where would we be? Well, I don't want to. I'm going to avoid the. Uh, Personal possession stuff, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel that's, I feel that's pretty much materialistic, although I would like to have a house and a pool and all that, you know, great stuff. But I don't want to talk about right. that. We'll put that. Yeah, but put, we'll, put, we'll put that on there. House and a pool. I will, I will say this, and again, this will sound somewhat silly. Look, I'm blessed at what I do. I get to draw stuff. I can't. There's certain days, because I'm still new at this. I'm not as uh, – I'm not a grizzled veteran so much. There are certain days that it's it's bothersome to me. They have to kiss us a job, right? It's our job. So there are certain days, and you know this, you're not feeling artistic, if you will. And it's a struggle to grind something out, you know. And my schedule doesn't allow me to have unproductive days, okay? I can't just say, today's a bad day. Now, I have them, so sometimes I'll try to catch up on paperwork or something like that. But I can't do that three days in a row. I can only do that maybe one day. And then that night, i got to pick it back up and pick up the card that night, you know. The point is, I'm pretty blessed at what I do. This will sound dumb, but I, I'm pretty happy with where things are and what I get to do every day, you know. Um, Great. I would like, I would tell you this, I would like to be a, I'd like to be a better artist. I would like to, I would like, I would like my stuff to, when there's done, look like I think it can look in my head, if that makes sense to you, you know, um, I would like to be faster because then I could be more productive. I could get more stuff done. Um, and I wouldn't have to work as many hours It's not so much work. It's just time spent away from your family. And part of the reason you do this is for your family, but then you get sidetracked, caught up trying to, you know, it's, it's a tough balancing act, you know? So I, I would like to have a little more free time because I think it would make me a better artist. I'm sure, like you said, the days that I don't work and I come back, my cards are usually better the next day, you know, because I'm more refreshed, you know? Um, I would like to do more bigger pieces, okay? I'd like to do some more of that stuff because that's something that I get to try new stuff on, you know? My cards are, my cards are pretty formulatic or I don't know that's not the right word but they're pretty I have a pretty much of a plan how to do there's not much change I can do other than make better colors within the cards you know what I mean um they're better layouts of course but the bigger pieces you can kind of spread your yeah so so that's what I'm saying the bigger pieces you can experiment more with backgrounds and stuff like that you know and you can uh try to you know you can add more detail to the bigger pieces so I, I would like to continue doing what I'm doing. I, you know, I'm not opposed to be, to bigger and better projects, of course. Um, I will tell you, the social media is exhausting. It's a, as you know, it's a 24 hour a day job, and I'm very bad at it. I try to be better at it. I don't know how to add more followers. I, I try to research it, but it, but no one has a real good definitive answer for it, you know? So you spend three or four hours researching and then you try that method and it doesn't really work. And it's just, man, it's, I don't have four hours to do that. 
Mm-hmm. So I, basically, a long, I, this is long winded. I like to keep doing what I'm doing, but I like it to be a little more simplified, if that makes sense. You know, absolutely. I like the system up and running. So all I, I can really just concentrate on doing the artwork. But yeah, absolutely. No, I think uh, I think you deserve it and you'll get it. Yeah, well, I, that's kind of you to say. We'll see. You just got to keep working hard, right? Keep grinding. Keep grinding. Yeah, exactly. Got to be yeah. willing to, uh, what is it, make the sacrifices. Put yeah, it pay up. the price, man. You got to be willing yeah. to. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome, man. I love it. Um, man, I think that's I think that's great. I think that's a great thing to end on. I think that um, okay, good. You're, you're so incredibly talented, and I, I'm so excited to see how the next, uh, you know, one, six, 12, 24 months pans out for you. And I'm always here to help if, if I can do anything. I think that um, there's a ton of opportunities. You know, like I said, I showed your stuff to Tops the other day. They were wildly impressed. I have no idea what they're going to do with artists sure. in the future. The stuff that we've talked about with the, or that you showed me really with the Beckett thing could be a lot. Um, you know, any anything, uh, like I said, anything that I can do to help, I think that your work is just absolutely f- phenomenal i can't wait till i'm up in the pipeline i know we got i got something in and i know there's a there's a wait but i'm very excited yeah. um for that and uh yeah man just holler anytime so i think so this is what i'm thinking i know we talked about doing a giveaway mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna do and we'll tell the people i know frank frank had asked about this so i think like this interview was awesome uh i knew that it would be but in it was confirmed it's awesome so I think that I'm going to do this. I'm going to go tweet, and I guess I'll just do it right now so that everyone on the comments can just go and go ahead and enter right now. But I'm basically going to tweet saying, epic interview with Ken Carl, and I'll tag you on Twitter. Uh, make sure to go watch the replay link for the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Retweet this for a print for a chance to win a print from me and a print from Ken, and then I'll put in parentheses two different winners. So we'll just we'll do a retweet contest. And we can let it run for, uh, we should set a date. So we should let it run maybe till like Monday or something. Like all, all weekend. Right. Whatever you think, man. Whatever you think. Get people retweeting it because I think that we can get people back here watching this replay, whether they just pick up snippets or whatever or retweet it. Like I think it's going to help um, all of us. And I'll, so we'll do this. To enter, you have to follow you on Twitter, following me on Twitter, retweet the tweet. The tweet will include the link to the video, but – you know, yeah, you can't make people watch it. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to do that. So I'm actually going to type out this tweet now while we're live. Okay. I have, go, go ahead. I have a question for you because yeah, you're experiencing yeah. this. How do I answer all that? Will I be able to see all these chat questions when this is over? You will. So if you go to the replay, you can either – you can. there's two ways to do it. You can say – you live comments and as the video goes you can see as the comments come in and they uh-huh. like what they're replying to uh or you can just view all the comments at one time and it's i mean there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be a lot um oh i don't have a link to this replay video yet because we're still live uh, okay okay so as soon as this ends everyone i'm gonna make a tweet and it's gonna be really clear it's you know how to win uh it's a retweet contest you have to be following carl and follow or ken carl and following Jameson. Uh, and yeah, it's just going to be trying to promote this and, and shine more light, um, on Ken and his work. And I think this interview is a great chat. And so that's what we're going to do. And then on Monday, Monday night, uh, we'll pick two random winners from retweets. One of them is going to get a print of their choice from anything that I've ever painted. And one of them, one of you guys is going to get one print of something that Ken has painted. Right. Yep. Yep. Great. Hey, before you before we go, man, I want to thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. If you're still there, man, thank you. He's laying down. He's like, he, he's still waving. He's, he's All right, t- tell him thank you. And I got his card coming too. He, he's on my list. And Blake, again, man, I've said it all throughout this interview. I think most of these people that know you know this about you, but the people that don't, they should know, man. You're a hell of a dude, man. And you appear to be genuine to me from what you've been great to me for no reason, man. We, we're not, we just met. I mean, there's no reason for you to be as kind to you as you've been to me. I can't thank you enough. I, that's right. That's right. I can't thank you enough for how well you treat me, man. And again, someday I hope to be able to repay this to you. I really do. And I want to thank everybody who what tuned in tonight and all the people that know me, the comment, I, I can't wait to read all these things. Hopefully they were all, you know, I, 
I'm sorry I didn't respond while this was going on. I don't know how to. So anyway, I will do my best to catch back up with everybody. Thank everybody. And thank you again, Blake and Matt, for having me on. Thank you. Of course, man. Thank you for coming. Everyone else, thank you guys so much. So stay tuned. In about 30 to 60 seconds, I'll have that tweet that you guys can retweet to get the entry in. But you can also retweet it tomorrow. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Stay awesome. All right, you too, man.